Hi, my name is Paul Grogan and welcome to a tutorial and playthrough of Batman Gotham City Chronicles. I'm joined today by Paul. Hello. And Peter. Hello. We're going to be doing a full three player game and we're going to be teaching you how to play the game as we go along. Now you two have played this game quite a bit. I've been forcing you to play this game for the last couple of months a bit, so you know the game quite well. Um, but the idea of this video is to help people learn how to play the game and show you that it is possible that you can actually play this game. So the first thing you need to do when you're playing a game of Batman Gotham City Chronicles is to choose which mission you want to play. Now the game is for two to four players. Uh, we're not going to be covering the co-op mode and the solo mode today, but there is going to be a solo mode with the, with the latest season uh, of the game. Um, but you need to choose which mission you want to play. Now, one of the players will play the villain. Peter's playing the villain today. And if you look at the mission book, so this is the, pa the page from the new mission book, you will see these are all the missions in uh, the, the, the base game. And you see the little icon on the right hand side. That tells you how many heroes there are in that mission. Now, it, you can play with more heroes than there are hero players if you want to. So, for example, we could have said today that we're going to be playing the mission to sink a city, which is the first mission that's included in the book, and that requires three heroes. And it is possible that we could have played that, that mission today, and me and Paul would have played one hero each, and then we would have played another hero between us. What we couldn't have done is we couldn't have played an icy welcome, because that mission only has one hero. And... Uh, we would have been arguing would about... Be, you would have yeah. been saying, who's throwing the batarangs? So basically, you need to choose which mission you want to play. You know, if Paul couldn't turn up today, me and Peter could have just played an icy welcome with just one hero and the villain. Today, we're going to be playing the scenario Major Gas Madness. Now, the reason why we're playing that scenario today is for two reasons. First of all, that mission has two heroes, so it means me and Paul are controlling one each. And the other reason is, a few weeks ago, I finished painting the Scarecrow miniature. Uh, and I thought, oh, now that I've painted it, which mission can I use to play with it? So that, that's why we're going to play this one today. We did have a practice run of this on Thursday, which didn't go very well for the heroes. Um, and I'm hoping that today, with a few tweaks, we'll do it. Now, once you've chosen which mission to play, you then need to set the game up. And we've already done that for you, but I am going to go through what you need to do to set the mission up. First of all, you will turn to the appropriate page in the mission booklet, and this gives you pretty much all of the information that you need to set the game up. On the left-hand side, you will see which map to use. There are multiple maps included with this game. This one is using Ace Chemicals, so you will get that map board out, and you will put it on the board. And then if you look at the right-hand page, you will see which miniatures the villain needs. Uh, hazmat Thugs, Brutes with Shotgun, Scarecrow, Prisoners, Brutes with Chains, and the thugs with crowbar. You can also see on that right hand page heroes. Now in this game you cannot just choose whichever hero you want to play. You are limited in your selection of which hero. So you can see here that this is a two hero game and the choice of hero one is either Batman, Batgirl or Robin. I'm hero one so I've chosen to play Batman today. Um, hero 2 is either Nightwing or Azrael, and you've chosen to play Nightwing. Nightwing. So you have a limited choice on which heroes you want to play based on the mission. Then what you do is you will set up the map. So as you can see on the left hand side, it tells you exactly where all of the miniatures start, and we've done that already for you. So if you look on here, uh, we've already set up the board with all of the miniatures ready. Now the heroes, the heroes also start in a fixed position. So hero one in this mission starts off up here, and hero two starts off here. So you can't act, you can't even choose where the heroes start in the mission. It is fixed. Now, if we just pull up this again, you will also see on the left-hand side there are certain components that you need in the game. So in this mission, we have some reinforcement tokens. We have some other tokens that represent the ventilation units. We have some computers. We have some equipment. All of that sort of stuff. Let's just go back to this view and you will see them. So what we've got is we have two reinforcement tokens in this game. And in fact, one of them is flipped to the other side. We have three ventilation unit tokens. So these are generic tokens that you get in the game and they represent different things depending on the mission. In this mission, these are ventilation units. We've got one there, we've got one up there, and we've got one here in the corner. Uh, we also have these tokens, which are gonna be used for something else that I'll explain in a minute. And we also have three pieces of equipment. We have a fire ax, we have a gas mask, and we have a stun grenade. So these are fixed uh, items for the particular setup. We also have some miniatures. We've got a safe over here, and we have a computer console here. And again, that's all fixed depending on the actual mission itself. 
Um, down in the bottom left, you will also see that this mission requires one extra component which doesn't start off in the game, and that is the information card. Um, and the information card will come into the game depending on uh, what we're doing. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to read the mission brief just to set the scene. This is Commissioner Gordon. This is an APB to all members of the Bat family. The worst has happened and we need your help. The Scarecrow has managed to weaponize and distribute his fear toxin to a truly frightening number of our citizens. The streets are teeming with victims, all of them raving, violent and vulnerable. We've identified the source of the outbreak, but you will need to gain access to the chemical plant and secure an antidote. If you don't act quickly, I fear this madness will spread and will soon be overrun. Hurry, Gotham City needs you. So that's the flavour mm. introduction to what we're doing. In terms of the rules, if we just go back to the mission, you will see down in the bottom left we have the end game and the victory conditions. And in this mission, this is actually a relatively simple victory condition. What the heroes have to do is we have to get the information card and we need to leave the map with the information card by the end of our seventh turn. If we do that, we win. If we don't do that, we lose. That's it. It's, it's as simple as that. Some of the other missions have far more complicated uh, victory conditions and endgame conditions, but this one, this one is relatively simple. Right. The next thing to do is we need to set up uh, the villain's command post. So if you look on the right-hand side of that page, you will see that those tiles are the tiles that we're using for the game, but also the order in which they appear in what's called the river. So I'm just going to now zoom in on the villain's command post. This is Peter's command post. And you will see that we have those tiles on the river in the order that they appeared. You will also see that we've got uh, certain other tiles on that board. We've got Scarecrow's life point counter set to four. Now the reason why Scarecrow's life point counter is set to four is, could you just put Scarecrow on the, uh, on the zoom in? This is Scarecrow's tile. And you will see there in the top right that he starts with four life points. Now all other villain enemies, miniatures, bad guys, goons, thugs, whatever, they always have a one life point, but the main villains normally have more than one life point. The Scarecrow has, has four life points. Right, you want to pop that back? Um, what else do we need to explain about the river? The cubes. So you'll notice that Peter has six energy cubes in the reserve zone and three in the fatigue zone, and the number in the middle is five. Now the reason for that is, if we just have a look at the mission again, you will see in the top right of the mission, it actually says how many cubes he starts with. So you can see there the six in the green zone uh, and three in the orange zone and the recovery value is five. So that's, that's the command post set up. The next thing to do is to set up the heroes. So let's have a look at our heroes down here. We've chosen to play Batman and we've chosen to play Nightwing. So what you do is you take the hero screen for your chosen hero and you slot it into one of these things called a bat tablet. There are three bat tablets included in the game because there can be a maximum of three heroes and you slot it in there like that and let's just zoom in and have a look at it. So what we've got is we have a plethora of icons and skills and characteristics and all sorts of things and we will explain this as we go along. The important thing is how many cubes we start with. Now Batman has 11 energy cubes as can be seen here. Nightwing has 10 energy cubes. 10 seems to be the standard for most of the heroes I've found. Mm -hmm. I think one of them only has nine, um, but Batman certainly has 11 cubes. But you will notice that some of these cubes start off in the reserve zone, some of them start off in the fatigue zone, and that is determined, again, by the mission. So if you look just above the column of heroes, you will see starting energy, it actually has got the number four. So what that means is, four of the cubes go in the fatigue zone and the rest of them go in the in the reserve zone so that that's that the next thing is to determine what equipment our heroes start with now batman doesn't start with any equipment forget these for a minute we'll get onto these but nightwing does okay now equipment looks very similar to bat gadgets but it, it is slightly different if you just flip those cards over paul the equipment has a black back and the back gadgets have a blue back. So how do you know what equipment the heroes start with? Well, if you look again on the right-hand side, of uh, on the right page, on the left-hand side of the right page, 
you will notice under Nightwing it actually says baton times two. So the equipment that each hero starts with is fixed for the particular mission that you're playing. And you can see there Batman doesn't have any equipment, but Nightwing, Nightwing does. So this, this is equipment, Nightwing has two batons. So that's fixed, you have no choice about that. What we do have a choice about is our bat gadgets. And this is a very big part of the game. Batman starts the game with four points of bat gadget. So whenever Batman, whenever this particular character uh, is playing in a mission, I can, I can choose four points of bat gadgets before the mission starts. And if you look at Nightwing, Nightwing has three points of bat gadgets. Now, some of the heroes don't have any bat gadgets whatsoever. So I played a mission the other day with Catwoman, mm -hmm. who started with uh, a, a certain piece of equipment, but she had no bat gadgets, right? So the, the number of bat gadgets you start with is not based on the mission. It is based on the particular hero. So any, any mission in which Batman is being used, Batman will choose four points of bat gadgets. And the reason why this is a big part of the game is the game comes with a big deck of bat gadgets. And I start with four points worth, which means I can choose up to a maximum of four points worth. So I've chosen to start with the taser gun, a freezing grenade, and an armband computer. And you will notice that's one, that's two, and that's one. You always want to use as many as you can, but it's basically space on your, your utility belt. Now, which bat gadgets should you choose? That is actually a very <laughs> difficult decision to make because you need to look at the scenario itself. You need to look at what the objectives are. You need to look at what villains you're going to be playing against. And we have chosen different bat gadgets today than we did on Thursday because we've learned from Thursday. Mm -hmm. So there is no... There's no easy, if you're playing the game for the first time and you are anything like when I played this game for the first time, is I went, right, I've chosen my hero. Oh, I now need to choose back gadgets. I have absolutely no idea what to select. That will come with time. The first few times you play this, don't worry about it too much, but you will learn from playing it and you'll play it and you'll be like, oh, I'll tell you what, I really should have taken the grappling hook. I now, I now know why. You don't have to choose the same back gadgets. There isn't a one fix for all. It isn't like there's only one solution to this mission because depending on what heroes you're playing, different bat gadgets might work better for different heroes. So there isn't a right or wrong answer for this. Well, there's definitely a wrong answer. Don't take, <laughs> don't take bat gadgets that are no use for whatsoever. For example, one of the bat gadgets is a lock picking set. In this particular mission, there is no lock picking. So don't choose that one, okay? But for example, one of the things that we're gonna be doing in this game is we're gonna be trying to hack into a computer, which is why I've chosen the armband computer for Batman because that's going to increase my hacking skill. So you want to choose bat gadgets uh, appropriate to the mission. While we're talking about bat gadgets and equipment, Nightwing's got both. So now let's just shuffle these to the left a little bit. So Nightwing has equipment and you have bat gadgets. The main difference between them is equipment has encumbrance values. So you'll notice the little one in the top right hand corner of equipment, that is the equipment's weight or encumbrance value. The, the number in the back gadgets is the, the space that it takes up in the utility belt. But back gadgets do not have any encumbrance. Mm. So your encumbrance is two. And that is a very big difference. Don't think that your back gadgets add to the weight that you're carrying. They, they do not. And encumbrance will be important later on. What else do we need to do before setting up our heroes? I think, I think we've done. Yes. I think we've chosen our yep. heroes... And we've chosen our thing. Is there anything else of setup we need to do? Ah, yes, the round track. So there is a round track that comes with the game where you track how many rounds that you're playing. And the mission will tell you which side has initiative. And you see here that the initiative is with the heroes. What that means is the heroes are going to take the first turn in every round. The initiative never changes. It is defined by the mission itself. And the game structure is basically... On each round, the side with initiative will take a turn, and then the side without initiative will take a turn. And that alternates until until the end of the game happens. Mm -hmm. So because we have the initiative, we're going to take the first turn of the game, then Peter will take a turn, that's the end of the first round, etc., etc. Uh, those two miniatures should not be there. Yeah, they are not needed for this scenario. Okay. Yeah. So one of the uh, common things, I will just mention this actually, because it did confuse me a little bit. Most of the missions you will always use all of the miniatures for all of the tiles. Mm. And there are four miniatures for each type of enemy 
figure in the game. But this mission only uses three of the brutes with shotgun and three of the brutes with chains. So the other ones remain in the box. Right. Okay, there is an area next to the... Uh, here, which is going to be the character pool, but the character pool starts off empty in this game. The reason why I'm mentioning that is there is one scenario in the book where there are things in the character pool at the start of the game. So they are not on the board, okay. mm. but they are in the character pool and they yeah. can come in later on. Okay. In this in this mission, as in most of the missions in this game, it is the character pool is empty. Okay. Right. Now, some extra stuff for people who might already know the game. We're going to show off some things which are going to be new for Season 3. And that is... Now, don't worry about the print quality, because this was printed on my home inkjet printer, but each hero is going to come with one of these skill references. So if you're looking at this, and you're thinking, oh my god, what do all of these icons do? Then there is going to be a handy-dandy skill reference sheet for you, so you can just look up the skills appropriate to you. So I've got the one for Batman. Paul's got the one for Nightwing. Your skill, um, reference, skill reference. Yep. There we go. But... Paul's also got a player aid. So this is a hero player aid. It's two-sided, and it's got lots and lots of useful information on there, which will help you to play the game to save you having to keep looking in the rulebook. Uh, Peter has also got his own villain reference sheet, which is two-sided. Um, and there's going to be a, a separate skills booklet as well, so that Peter can look up all of the skills of all of his villains. Because whereas Peter doesn't have his own skill reference sheets, because there's, there'll be too many of them. Uh, there is a separate skills booklet so that you can look up all of those. We'll explain that as, as we go along. Right, I think it's time that we dive in mm. and start playing the game. And then, as I say, there's, there's a, this is a complicated game. There's no two ways about it. This is a complicated game. There's a lot of rules in this game, which is why the rule book is big. And in this video, we're going to try our best to get across how to play the game. We're certainly going to explain from a high level how the game plays. You're also going to see some very specific rules in this game that apply to our characters, or apply to the mission, or apply to this particular map. You are not going to see every single rule of the game in this video. It would be impossible, because there are so many different characters and there are so many different skills at play. So, some of the things you're going to see here today, please be aware that they are only going to apply to this particular mission. But other rules that I'm going to explain are, are generic rules that apply to everything. Okay, just before we start, actually, I am going to read through the mission special rules. Okay, I'm just going to go through them, and we're going to go through what the objective is. Because although we had the flavor text intro, we actually need to work out how to win. So, we know how to win. We have to leave the board by turn 7 with the information card. So, let's work... How do we get the information card? So the information card is actually kept uh, in the safe. Have I got a preset on the safe? Yes. Can you just point to the safe, Peter? So there is the safe. The information card is inside the safe. Now, to open the safe, this is, this is, the, this is the tricky bit. We have to, there are two places on the board, and you can just about see this. There's here, and there's here. Okay, so there are two places on the board where we have to enter the codes to the safe. So this is a special safe. You cannot open it just by going to the safe itself. You have to be in two places at the same time and enter the access codes. Now, we only have two heroes in this game, so that means one of us is going to have to be in here, and the other one has to be in here. And on the same turn, we have to enter the access codes to the safe and when they do that, when we do that, the safe pops open and the information card comes out. There's the information card. So, how do we get the access codes? There are two ways in this mission to get the access codes. And again, this is, this is mission-specific rules. We can either hack into the computer, which is here. Now, to do that, we have to make a uh, complex manipulation of difficulty 6, for which the hacking skill can be used. Now... Batman has an inherent hacking skill of one, mm -hmm. and with my armband computer, I have another one hacking skill. So basically, I, I'm, I'm going to be quite good at that, I think. Still, <laughs> let's hope. Let's hope. <laughs> Complex manipulation of difficulty six is actually really, really hard to do. The other way to get the access codes is to interrogate Scarecrow. Now, the way that we do that is we have to be in the same area as Scarecrow, which, as we found out on Thursday, is not a safe place to be. But if we do that, 
we can try and interrogate him, which is a complex thought of difficulty four. Mm. If we do either of those two things, we get the access code. So let's just go through things again in, in the order. The first thing we need to do is either interrogate Scarecrow or hack into the computer. If we do either of those things, we get the access codes. Yep. Once we've got the access codes, we need to enter the codes here and here on the same turn. If we end the turn having only entered one of the codes, the marker flips back over and we have to do it again. I think it represents the fact that you like turning a key in two mm. separate locations at the same time. Like on the nuclear submarine. Yeah. Once we've done that, the safe pops open and the information card comes out. We then have to go into the room with the safe. and we, Well, one of us is going to be, be there. in there anyway. Yep. We pick up the information card and we've then got to get out. Now, the way that is we that get out thing, in yeah. this game is we leave oh. by one of the reinforcement points. Right. Okay. Now, if you remember what I said earlier on, this reinforcement token starts off the game inactive. So you can't use it as a reinforcement point, and we can't escape. But as soon as the safe is opened, that flips over, ah. and it becomes a valid reinforcement point for you, and it becomes a, a valid escape option for us. Right. Okay? So that is the scenario, and that's what we're trying to do. So you've got to run around here and jump over mm. the... Or the smash the wall, because there is a fire axe here, and if we picked up the fire axe, the fire axe has a skill that allows us to smash through walls. There's multiple approaches to this mission. It, as I mentioned earlier, you don't just... I don't think you can solve this mission by saying, oh, this is how you do it. I think there are multiple... Well, maybe you can solve it, but there's, there's multiple solutions to it. Right, special rules for this mission. Mm -hmm. The villain may, because he's a villain... <laughs> Turn down the ventilation in the factory. But you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that. No. So we don't need to explain how that. Don't, happens. don't need to do that. <laughs> it's possible it might just happen. It might just happen. <laughs> so I mentioned earlier on we have three ventilation units on the board. The villain player uh, may, as an action, try to turn down the ventilation. It is a complex manipulation of difficulty three. We'll explain that a bit more when it happens, but just be aware that the villain player can try to turn down the ventilation. If he does that and he succeeds, we take this token and we put it next to the board. That represents the fact that one of the ventilation units has been turned off and that increases the level of toxic fumes in the factory. Now, those toxic fumes are going to affect everybody, both heroes, villains, etc., etc. The only person who's immune to it is Scarecrow. Okay, Scarecrow is immune to the effect of those toxic fumes. Thankfully, Nightwing has brought with him a compact gas mask. So you, in this mission, that makes you immune to two of the tokens. Right. Okay, so if two of the tokens are placed uh, by the side of the board, you're immune to them. Batman does not have a gas mask, but there is one here. Handy, mm. there is a gas mask in the corner here. Yeah. But that toxic fumes is actually going to affect uh, your miniatures as well, except for the hazmat thugs... Who've got a gas mask. They've masks. got the same gas mask, so they are immune to two of those tokens. And Scarecrow. Scarecrow is, is, is immune to all of them, right. because that's what it says in the scenario. Right. Um, we, we will explain what the toxic fumes do in more detail uh, when we get there. Other than that, we've mentioned about getting the access codes. We've mentioned about entering the safe codes. We've mentioned about opening the safe. The only other special rule is equipment cards may be thrown to each other. Mm. So heroes, if one hero has an equipment card, they can throw it as a complex manipulation to another hero. The information card cannot be thrown. It is a special rule for this scenario that that cannot be thrown. Right, any questions about the special rules for the for the mission? No. So this, this flips over when we take the information. When the safe opens, yep. this reinforcement right. token is going to flip over. And that's one of the ways out. Yeah. Now, Good. I've only ever played three different missions in this game. I've played Tasinka City, I've played Plant Invasion, and I've played this one. Mm. Every single mission plays out entirely differently. <laughs> yep. Because, not just the map, not just the heroes, but the, the theme of what the scenario is, the special rules and everything else. Um... And yeah, with, with 24 missions in the base game, it's just, it's yeah. just huge. Yeah. Just huge. Of course, I can't play all of the missions from the base game because I haven't finished painting all of the miniatures yet. <laughs> but I am getting there slowly. Yeah, that's good. Right. Okay. So let's jump into the game. As I mentioned, the game is divided into rounds. 
we use this tracker here and at the start of the round there is what's called an upkeep step. Now certain missions will have something happen in the upkeep step. In this mission the only thing that happens is Peter because he's sitting nearer moves the counter to the next round. So we start off we are now round one. The next thing that happens is the side with initiative takes their turn. In this mission it is the heroes that have the initiative so it is our turn. Now a hero's turn actually consists of multiple steps. We can skip the first two for now, I'll explain why later, but we're going to jump straight to step three. Step three of a hero's turn is we need to decide whether we are going to be active or we are going to be resting. Now obviously the game has just started, it is very likely that we're probably not going to sit down and have a rest. Um, we're going to be active. So what you do is you, you set your stance marker to either point to the number on the left hand side like that if, you're, if you want to stay active or you can choose to rest and point the number to the right hand side. If you rest you will recover more energy cubes but you will not get to perform any actions on your turn. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to do that. No. So no. we're both going to go active. Yeah. So I'm going to set my marker there. Nightwing set his marker. Now uh, I don't know if I mentioned earlier on, but there are a number of variant rules included in this game. And we are actually going to be using one of those variant rules today. Peter's approved this, but this is going to make the mission slightly easier for the heroes. Because uh, based on how it went on Thursday, we didn't do very well at all. Um, and the variant rule that we're using, we're actually using two variant rules today, but one of them is that these numbers, the two and the six, we're going to treat them as if they were one higher. Okay, it's a big advantage for the heroes to do that, and it may make the mission a little bit too easy for us. We don't know, but we're going to do this and we're going to see how it works out. So, the, advan the, the idea behind this variant rule is, the thinking is, it's actually quite a lot harder to play the heroes when you're learning the game. So when you're relatively inexperienced with the game, you probably want to allow the heroes to use this variant rule. Now, if we play this scenario two or three times, mm. and then we start winning, we're like, right, We'll drop the variant rule and now let's play it again. Yep. So you can use these variant rules to customise the difficulty of the game, but it is recommended because I know so many reports from people over the last three years that have played this game and said it's impossible to win as the heroes. The variant rule is in there to help those players, but once you get to know the game and once you get to know the mission, you will find it easier. So basically, this number, instead of it being a two, is a three. And what that means is I recover three cubes. So I move cubes from my fatigue zone into my reserve zone. And Nightwing is also going to recover three cubes. Yep. There you go. Right. Now that we've done that, it is now step four of the hero's turn, which is the main part of the game, which is where we take actions. Now, the way that the action step works is it is very fluid. We choose a hero to take an action. That hero performs an action. Then we choose a hero to take an action, which could be the same hero. It could be a different one. They take an action. And then we choose a hero to stay, and it repeats like that. So in other words, Batman, I could move, I could move again, I could attack, I could move again. Then Nightwing could have a go, then Batman could have a go, because mm -hmm. he's selfish. <laughs> then you could have a go, and basically we can take t keep taking turns in whatever order we want to, until we decide we're not going to take any more actions. Now, whenever you take an action in the game, there are five main actions in the game. There's melee attack, ranged attack, manipulation, thought, and movement. All of those actions will require you to spend energy cubes from your reserve zone, placing them onto the space in order to perform the action. The more cubes you spend, up to the maximum limit that's printed here, means gives you more chance of being successful in performing that action. Um, you don't have to use all of your energy cubes on your turn. And in fact, if you remember, I'm only going to recover three energy per turn if I'm active. So if, if I was to spend all of my energy cubes on turn one, it means on turn two, I'm only going to get three cubes. So it is a very tactical game in terms of when and how you spend your energy cubes. Right. Right. We are ready to start. We're ready to take the first action of the game. Your work. Who's okay. going to take the first action? Are you going to go first? Yeah, I think we, so. We have been talking about this. <laughs> since Thursday and we've been coming up with plans of what we're going to do and we got so hounded on Thursday we did and we've, okay. got, we've got a completely new plan and a completely new approach to how we're going to do this so Nightwing's so, going to take the first action of the game explain to us which action you're going to do okay so I'm going to use the ranged attack yep. action so I'm going to place you spend one or more energy one cubes or more. 
You just going to spend the one? I think I'm going to do two. You sure? Yeah. Remember, you're going to. Well, I can get more. Of dice. You're gonna, yeah. You are actually, I am going to get. I'm going to get some more. Actually, that's yeah. true. One of those. One of those. I'm going to use both batarangs. Yep. So I get. First of all, I get an orange. So let's talk through this. Okay. okay. So Paul has chosen to perform a ranged attack. He's chosen to use only one energy cube. Each cube that he spends gets him one orange dice. So if you were to spend two cubes, you would have gained two orange dice. Okay. You will see why one energy cube in this particular situation is probably the best thing because whenever you perform a ranged attack, you can only do so if you have a ranged weapon. Now, melee attacks are different. So anybody can perform a melee attack. You may have a melee weapon or not. You don't need one. Whereas a ranged attack, you can only perform a ranged attack if you have a ranged weapon. You have two ranged weapons. Mm -hmm. They're both the same. They're both batarangs. Now, the other rule about ranged attacks is you may only use one ranged weapon. So how is Nightwing allowed to use both? It's because of this. This skill, ambidexterity 1, means that Nightwing can use two weapons as long as both of those weapons are either encumbrance 1 or less or size 1 or less. So because Nightwing is ambidexterity 1, you could use both of those Batarangs. And if you look at the Batarang card, you will see that it comes with a yellow dice. Yep. So every time you perform a ranged attack, no matter how many energy cubes you, to, you choose to spend, you get a yellow dice. The arrow inside that icon is a re-roll, which we will we'll come on to later on. So you've currently got one orange dice and two yellow. Right, now, the next thing we need to talk about is line of sight. A melee attack, as you might expect, can only be performed against uh, an enemy in your area. A ranged attack can be performed against anybody on the board that you have line of sight to. And there are multiple ways to work out how, uh, whether, whether you've got line of sight or not. Now, if you look closely at the map, in fact, let's just zoom in on Nightwing's area for a minute. These are line of sight markers. So most of the areas on the board have line of sight markers. Some areas have two line of sight markers, but this one has a line of sight marker here. This is a line of sight marker. There's a line of sight marker here. You'll notice that there's letters on them as well. So the first thing I think is the easiest thing to check is the letters. If you are in an area where there is a line of sight marker with a letter that matches the same area as the, tar as, as the target area, then you have line of sight. That overrides anything. So if we have a look at uh, which one was it? I think it was this one. Yep, is this one here. So this is the area, assuming you're attacking here. I am going to attack there, yep. Okay, if you look in this area here, you will see that we have letters B and D. And if we just have a look at Nightwing's area again. No, nope, that's not Nightwing's area. That's Nightwing's area. We have the letter B. So we don't need to look at anything else. We know that Nightwing has line of sight to that area because that's got the letter B and that's got the letter B. Okay. While we're talking about line of sight, though, I will just mention the other two ways that you can determine line of sight. Mm -hmm. If you draw an imaginary line from the line of sight marker to the other line of sight marker, as long as it doesn't cross an obstruction, and we'll come on to obstructions in a minute, or an area that is of higher elevation, then you have line of sight. And there is one more way that you've got line of sight as well, is the orange lines on the map. Okay. We'll come on to this a little bit more later when, when, once we start getting into this area here. Now, while we're talking about line of sight, it has to be said that Monolith have created a very, very useful tool, which is on a website. Uh, and if you Google it, it is on the overlord.net and it is an extremely useful tool that I don't play the game without. I have my iPad there and I have the line of sight tool. And what you do is you can click on areas and it will tell you exactly where you've got line of sight to without you having to do any calculation yourself. For this video today, I've actually got the line of sight tool on my second monitor and I've overlaid it onto the map. So if we move around, you will see this is Nightwing's area here. You will see that what it's done is it's shaded different areas in green and yellow. And the reason why it's shaded areas in yellow is if you are performing a ranged attack at an area which is of a lower elevation, mm -hmm then you get an extra bonus of one yellow dice. So you can see here from where Nightwing is in the corner here, 
you've got line of sight to pretty much everything on the board. You don't have line of sight to this area here because it's behind the barrels and you don't have line of sight to this area here because it's behind the barrels and you don't have line of sight to any of the rooms. Mm. But other than that, oh, and you don't have line of sight over there either. Okay, but other than that, you can see every area on the map and let's just talk quickly about elevation levels. So this is the map reference sheet. Now again, ignore the quality because this was printed out on my home printer. But in the original game, these map reference sheets were in the back of the mission book. They are now a separate set of sheets. So what you do is you take the sheet for the appropriate map that you're playing, and there's a lot of information on here, but the first thing we're looking at is the levels. And you can see this is level zero down at the bottom. We have this darker blue for level one. We have the light blue for level two, and the green up here is level four. So right now, Batman and Nightwing are on level four, which is why we're getting yellow dice if we were to attack anything over there. So yeah, so this handy reference sheet, which as I say, is now a separate, a separate sheet that comes with the game, will tell you the elevation levels. So, choose your target. Who do you want to attack in this area? I think I'm going to go for uh, the brute with the shotgun okay. first. So we have a brute with a shotgun here. That is your target. Do you have line of sight? Yes, you do yes. have line of sight because of the letters B and B. And now what we do is because it's a higher elevation, you get an extra yellow dice. Okay. So they are the dice. Now, just a quick thing. You might think, why are we not going for Scarecrow? Okay, because Scarecrow... Two, three, four... I think, it's, I think it's this one. Is it this one? Yes, it's this one. Scarecrow is in here. Scarecrow is, 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 is the villain of this scenario. He's really, really nasty. And you might think, well, why are we not just going for Scarecrow? Well, Peter is going to put... No. So, we mentioned the heroes all have skills and icons all over them. Every villain tile also has a lot of icons. And Scarecrow, as you'll see down on the, right, the bottom right, has three skills. And it's that bottom skill that we're talking about now. That skill is protected too. And what that means is that Scarecrow cannot be targeted by an attack as long as there are at least two of his friends in the same area as him. So right now, because Scarecrow is in an area with, uh, with two other things, we can't actually attack Scarecrow directly. So that's why you're going for one of the other ones. So which yep. one? Are you going for the yeah, brute? Yeah, I'm going for the brute. The brute with the shotgun? Yep. Right, okay. So we've declared the target. We're now at the point we're rolling the dice. So you've got one orange because you spent an energy, two yellow for the two batarangs, batarangs. and another yellow because of the elevation levels. Yep. yep. Right, off we go then. Right. Now, once you've rolled the dice, we have various re-roll steps. If we just have a look at Nightwing's batarangs again, you'll notice that the there is a, an arrow within the yellow icon. That is what's called a free re-roll. So you've actually got two yellow yep. re-rolls. Now, what's interesting about this game is you've got two yellow re-rolls, but you didn't, have to de you didn't have to declare which dice was for which. Mm. So even if this was the dice that you got from Elevation, it, it, it doesn't matter. You've got two free yellow re-rolls, so you might as well just yep. re-roll both of the blanks. Yep. Right. Better. Okay. Now, the next thing is paid re-rolls. So whenever any player is rolling any dice, whether they're attacking, defending, trying to pick up some litter, whatever it is that they're doing in the game, if you're ever rolling dice, you get your free re-rolls sometimes, if any, and then you can pay to re-roll. Now, paying to re-roll costs energy, and there are certain times where you might want to do it. What you need to look at is you need to look at the distribution of successes on the dice. So, for example, the yellow dice has three blanks, two ones and a two. So, you've got to work out whether it is worth spending the energy to re-roll the dice to get any extra successes. Do you want to do that? Or just, look, just, looking at the, just looking at the, uh, the armour of the brute. Yeah, remembering that if you wanted to pay to re-roll that yellow dice, mm -hmm. it would cost you one energy. Mm -hmm. That one energy could buy could have been you another a whole extra attack mm -hmm. with loads more dice. Yep. So, yep. so um, it's currently four. Four. 
So that's the, uh, that, that's that, the end of there. the attack step. I'll stay right, there. Okay, yep. so the number of attack successes is now determined. We have four attack successes. It is now over to Peter to decide whether he wants to defend or not. Now, Peter, could you just put that thug card over on the brute. thing? It's the Sorry, the brute. The brute with the shotgun. Brute with the shotgun. Yep. yep, if you just put that over there. Now, if you notice, in the top right, there is like a, a little armour icon. That is what's called automatic defence successes. So, Peter already has two automatic defence successes for that brute. That means if you if Paul had have only rolled two successes, it wouldn't have done anything. It would have just bounced off completely. But as it is, you've got four. Mm -hmm. Peter's got two automatic defence successes. If you want to put the tile back... But Peter can choose to defend if he wants to. If he does, he will spend energy and he will be able to roll dice to see if he gets any successes. Do you want to defend? So I have to decide how many cubes I'm committing yes. uh, before I roll any dice. Mm -hmm. And for each cube I commit, there's only four spaces available for the whole of the uh, turn. Yep. Um, I get one orange die. Correct. So... Um, so you could... An orange dice have got three blank surfaces. Is it two or I three? I think they've only got two, two blanks. Two blank surfaces. Two blanks. Two uh, ones and two twos. Two ones and two twos. Yeah. So in order to successfully defend, I need two successes. So if I rolled one die, I would have a one in three chance of successfully defending. Mm -hmm. um, but each die is a cube, and I've only got six. Yeah. I've got to think about this. And also, this is our our first attack of the game and it's mm. only cost us one cube to do this attack and Nightwing has got all those cubes yeah. so he could do lots and lots, lots, of, and attacks. lots of attacks but if I don't defend then the next attack could be could, straight could onto, be onto, onto, Scarecrow. onto Scarecrow so I think at this stage I, I, I will defend Okay. because Batman hasn't got any ranged attack has he? Batman so has no just, ranged attack this is, this is the other thing like, as I mentioned earlier on even though Batman has a ranged attack space and I roll orange dice whenever I do a ranged attack I don't have any ranged weapons so Batman in this particular mission right now cannot perform a ranged attack at all so I've really if I'm going to try to defend it's going to have to be two cubes the alternative is not to defend at all that, that's just, the way I'm yeah. choosing to analyze this so I'm going to go with two cubes to defend with okay uh, I potentially could re-roll some of them if exactly. the dice mm -hmm. don't come up for me. But if I do that, I'm only going to be able to do the same once more this yeah. turn. And look at all those cubes <laughs> that Nightwing has yeah. got. Nightwing is ready to fire. But okay. So, two orange dice Two defense. orange dice it is. Here we go. And I get one success. Now, you could pay to re-roll if you wanted to. Having committed this far, I think I will. So one re-roll. So yeah, Peter has paid one energy into his re-roll area space, and you can immediately just see how yeah energy management is what this game is all about. Uh, re-roll, and I get a success. Got wow! So we have four attack successes. We have four defense successes, which means we have no wounds. If you remember what I said earlier on. Except for Scarecrow, everything else has one life point. That's why I was saying that we needed to get more successes mm. than the Defender, because yeah. if we do, we deal one damage. Enough it doesn't damage. matter how many. We could have ten successes against two. Against the, the, the goons, it doesn't matter. As long as you've got yeah. at least one more attack success, then it means that the goons... So I've saved him, but look what it's cost me. It's cost you three cubes to add half one. Of, half of my energy Yeah, for one attack. Okay. So that, that's good for us. That's really good for us. So do you want to just do exactly the same thing again? I do. There we go. So that's we're going to do exactly the same. So Nightwing's going to have another go, spend another one energy, and literally do exactly the same thing again. So it's one orange, one orange. three yellow, three yellow. with two yellow re-rolls. Oh, dear. Well, you've got your two free re-rolls. Oh, two free re-rolls. Dropped rolls. on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Dropped it on the floor. Slipped on the banana skin. Come on. Oof. Okay, now that's Dear. that's two. That's not great. So that will do nothing. That will do nothing. That will just bounce off. It'll bounce off. But again, um, is it is it worth I'm not, just? No, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do anymore. So you can use them as many times. Exactly. As you like. Yeah. 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 A, they've, just come back. they've just come back. Okay. So. So. Yeah, are, I'm. Are I'm gonna still going to fire. I'm going to fire. I'm going to fire again. So the number here is four. 
Yep. That means that you can have a maximum of four cubes here. Remember, you don't have to put one energy in at a time. But I think because of the situation with the Batarangs and the elevation bonus, mm. it's probably more efficient to, try it before I move. to have yep. lots of little attacks. Yep. Uh, okay, that's two. Let's re-roll Two free re-rolls. Oh, Ooh, that's better. Ooh. Yeah, now, now that, that is better. That, hurts. that that will dissuade Peter from a def de defending because we've got six attack successes. You've got two defense. You're going to need another four. Need four, which is at least two. Uh, we're not laughing hysterically quite so much <laughs> as we were. Right? Um, I'm not going. I'm going to choose okay. not to defend that. So it's we have our first difficult. casualty in the game, and what so happens? This is, is top knot. Yeah, the figure is removed and it's placed next to the command post in an area known as the, the, the character pool. And the character pool is potential reinforcements that can be brought back later on. Right. So okay. you've had three actions. I've had three. Shall I have a go? Yeah. You've got plenty, Again, it doesn't you've got plenty of energy. We can, so, yeah. we can switch. That's good. So Batman, because he doesn't have any ranged attacks whatsoever, Batman is going to choose the movement action. Now, the movement action... Um, is actually made up of a series of separate moves. So every individual move is from one area to an to an, an, another area on the board that that you can reach. So it's basically you move one step at a time, but the whole thing together is called the movement action. Now, the first time in a round that a hero moves, you get what's called a first movement bonus. That is printed here, and it is reduced if you've got a high encumbrance. So Batman's first movement bonus is two, but if I was carrying four points of encumbrance, it would be one. And if I was be carrying six points of encumbrance, it would be zero. So I've got, if essentially what this gives me is two free movement points, but it only applies the first time that I choose the movement action in the round. I could choose the movement action later in the round, but I would only get that the first time. So I'm gonna choose the movement action I add these free movement points to what's called a move point pool, and then I spend the move point pool to move around. So unlike the ranged attack where you had to spend uh, a cube, oh yeah, that should be there. Uh, unlike the ranged attack where you had to spend a cube to perform the attack, I, I currently don't have to spend any cubes to move because I've got my free movement points. Okay, let's have a look at where Batman is. Batman is up there, in the top corner of the board. Let's just zoom in on Batman. So you will see that Batman has a white line between that area and this area. That white line or an orange line means that those two areas are adjacent and you can move between them for a, a base cost of one movement point. Now that movement point cost could increase because of difficult terrain, hindering modifiers, all sorts of factors. But right now, none of that applies. Batman could move here for one movement point. Batman doesn't want to do that. Batman wants to get down here and into this area here. But there is no white line between this area and this area. So if we have a look again at the map reference sheet, you will see that the area that Batman is in here is connected to this area down here. But it's got these colored arrows. Now, what this means is the red is a climb mm. and the white is a drop. So Batman has two options. He can either climb from here to here, and it is a level one climb, or he could drop from there to there, and it's a level four drop. Now, the reason it's a level four drop is, remember, this is level four, this is level zero. Now, on most of the maps, the climb level is the same as the difference between the levels. But if you look carefully at the, uh, the artwork on the board, we have that very handy ladder. So that ladder actually means that it's it's a climb level of one. Now, very simply, a climb level of one means it adds one movement point to the cost. So normally, if this was Paul Grogan instead of Batman, Paul, to move from there to there, would be a default cost of one movement point plus another one because it's a climb level of one. So the climb level adds to the move point cost to move to the area. Now... I'm using me as an example because let's look at a, a very, very important skill in the game, a skill that a lot of the heroes have, which is the, the springy boot skill, <laughs> otherwise known as parkour. Batman has parkour level one. And what that means is the level of all climbs and jumps is reduced by one. So in fact, 
Batman ignores that climb level of one. You can't reduce it to less than zero, but you can reduce it to zero. So let's go through that again. The default cost of movement is one. It is plus one because it's a climb level of one as indicated by the map reference sheet. However, because Batman has parkour one, he ignores the one point of climb and therefore can move there for one movement point. And that is my first move done. Now, my movement action isn't over. I have done the first move, but remember, a movement action is made up of an individual, uh, several individual moves. I have still got one free movement point left, and I'm going to use that movement point to do what's called a simple adjacent move and move across this white line into this area here. Now, moving into an area with enemies doesn't cost you any extra movement points. Moving out of an area with enemies might because of the hindering modifier, but none of that applies. So Batman has spent his two free movement points and my movement action is not over. If I really wanted to, mm -hmm. I could spend energy cubes to generate extra movement points and I could leave that area. I don't have to stop just because I've entered an area with enemies, but if I try to move out of that area, there's what's called a hindering modifier and it's going to cost me a lot of movement points. We're not going to do that. We're going to perform a melee attack. So I have two targets. I have the thug with a crowbar or the brute with chains. Now the brute with chains is a lot tougher uh, than the thug. But let's have a look at Batman's sheet. So Batman can only spend three cubes doing a melee attack. But every cube that I do spend will give me one red dice. I'm also equipped with a taser gun. And the taser gun, similar to the Batarangs, is every time I perform a melee attack, I get one orange dice. I also get electricity one. We'll talk about that later on. We might talk about that later on. It doesn't apply to the, to the, the basic miniatures. So if I spend one cube, that gives me a red and an orange. Now, I don't get any re-rolls like you with mm -hmm. your batarangs. Yep. It is just a red and an orange, but the distribution of successes on the red dice is a lot better than the orange, which is a lot better than the yellow. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm now deciding which target I want to hit. Let's just have a let's have a closer look at what's going on in here. So this is the this is the fight right now, Batman and these two. And yeah, I've got to choose which one of these that I want to attack. So I know that this has two points of automatic defense and this thug only has one point of automatic defense. And I'm factoring that in along with the fact that I've got a combo skill to which one I want to attack. And also, yeah. uh, it's worth considering where they are in the river. That's a very good point as well. So yeah, a big part of the game is that we know that on, uh, on the villain's turn, the villain is going to activate two tiles from the river. And the brute with chains and the thugs are both at the end of the river. Now, that means if he did want to activate them, it's actually going to cost the, him a lot more cubes to activate them. So he's more... The villain is, is generally speaking, in, um, more inclined to activate the tiles down that end of the river because they're a lot cheaper. But mm. the two, the two, my two possible targets are the two that are at the end of the yep. river. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about the future as well because neither of those two have ranged weapons. Mm -hmm. If you took them out now, it would take them a long time to follow you. Well, I'm just thinking, if, if, get... if I don't take them out and I leave, yeah. but because of the hindering modifier, it's going to cost me so many movement mm. points to move out of there. I'm, I'm beating them up just so that it doesn't cost me extra movement points to move through them. Um, they I mean, got, the, They've got families, you know. I'm, I'm not killing them. <laughs> Neutralising. Ba Batman it's actually different. has a moral code. If you look at Batman's sheet, I've yeah. got a, a moral code. I as, cannot, as do yeah, I. As do I. We're the good guys. I don't. No, 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 no. You don't. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Which one do I want to hit? Because if I hit the thug, there's more chance that my combo works. But then there's less chance of the combo working against the other brute. If you went for the brute and you managed to get the combo, you're more likely to take out the thug. Exactly. So that, that's what I'm going to go for. I'm going to go for number nine on the sports team. <laughs> um, yeah, we're going to go for we're going to go for that one. So as I mentioned, I've spent one cube. I could spend more cubes, but I'm I'm going to try with one first and see what happens. So I get yeah. a red dice because of that, and because I've I've got the taser gun equipped. Remember, melee. You do not have to use a melee weapon, but if you've got one, you may use one. So. I, I'm going to use one. So it's a red and an orange. 
Here we go. Let's see what we get. Come on. Okay, I've got three successes. I don't get any free rerolls. I'm not going to pay to do an extra reroll, even though even though the even red. though the red. Yeah. So I've got three successes. So okay. it's over to the villain. That brute only has two automatic defense successes. So if you don't do something, it's removed. Oh no! Hang on a minute. I've got martial arts. I forgot. So you get an extra three. I, yeah. So martial arts one means. As long as I've rolled at least one success, I get one additional success. So in effect, we're going to use this this yellow dice for the. In fact, let's use the black one because we don't use the black ones very much. So the black dice we're using to represent the martial arts. So I've actually got four successes. Hmm. Wow, that was good. That was good. Now, if it had been three, that would have been quite an easy decision because yeah. I would have committed one cube to defend, giving me a one, a two, two and three chance of successfully keeping him alive. But now, one cube only gives him a one in three chance, so I need to commit two cubes to make it more likely, which only leaves me with one. Not so right, that's yeah. not really a great situation to be in. So I'm, uh, but if I let you knock him over, you get a free attack yeah, on the we other haven't, gun. We haven't covered the combo skill yet. There's a combo skill you've got. But also, as, as we've just discussed, I don't think... I don't think those miniatures are essential for you. But I've only got three of them on the board. It's true. And mm -hmm. if I lose one, then... And I, if I lose all of them, they become neutralised. Yep. Uh, which makes it more difficult to bring them back. So I have to think about it. All, the, lots and lots of interesting decisions mm -hmm. uh, to make as, as the villain. I'm going to... Let's let's do it. Oh, he's I'm, going to do it. Oh, let's do it. Oh, wow! I didn't think he was going to. I'm going to defend. Wow. Okay, defend. so you get two, two orange, orange dice. dice. So you got four attack successes, which leaves me with one. Wow. Cube. Okay. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh busted out. Right. <sighs> That's the end of it. That's the end of it. That's the. I'm not going to commit any more cubes. No, nope. you're not. You're not going to uh, pay to re-roll. I'm no, not. No, no, so no. The, so the brute the, goes that, down. that has gone. That goes into the character pool. And That's now, bad. Bad. Batman gets his combo skill. So we're going to gradually explain most of these skills as, as we go along. Um, but the combo skill basically means that if I neutralise an enemy, then I may get an additional free combo attack with one red dice against another enemy in my same area. Now, the limitations of combo is that you cannot use weapons. So it is purely just my red dice. I can use my martial arts, but I can't use the taser gun. So basically, I'm getting one free attack with a red dice. A question. Yep. You don't need to uh, add a, nope. a cube, nope. so it doesn't add to your total of three. Correct. Right. Yeah, it is just a free attack with one red dice and possibly martial arts. So I've rolled one That's with the martial successes. arts. Is two successes. And I can't defend anymore no. because I've used all of my four spaces. Yeah. On the board. Yeah. And if you just put the thug tile onto the uh, onto the other area. This is the... Thug with the uh, crowbar. Yeah. yeah. So the thug with crowbar, as you see in the top right, has only got one automatic defence success. So I got two successes. You only had one success, which means... That's the end of him. That is removed and put in the character pool. Right. I'm going to take a breather. Do you want to have another action? Y yeah. I think so. What do you want to do well, next? Well, I think while I'm, while, I think while I'm thinking, I've got two two things I'm thinking of. One is I could continue to fire to try and take this this guy out, but I'm concerned that next when the villains go, mm -hmm. that the hazmat team, okay, can manipulate the the air conditioning unit in my um, area. In your area, could do. Uh, but he would have, have to move. go through that. Could yeah. you just explain that one again? So, so this, this area here, we've we've not covered this yet. But this is, is the camera going to pick this up? Yeah, you can just see here. This whole area here has got one level of dangerous terrain. Mm. Now, dangerous terrain means that if you move into that area, you will roll one yellow dice and you will take that damage in wounds and it bypasses defence. Even if you're wearing a big rubber Now, boot. we do have to look up the gas immunity skill because the gas immunity skill oops, might mean that you are immune to dangerous terrain. So I'm just going to look that up now in the skills reference sheet. Um, but before we do that, 
we've already determined that you get an elevation bonus yeah. from here. Yeah. I don't know if you wanted to have one more shot from here Just with the elevation bonus. Just to take this. Well, I think so. While I there before I moved, so that was the two the two options were to come down and try to but stop the hazmat. But I could come down afterwards. But I could come down afterwards. Is what I'm sure. thinking. Yeah, I could come down afterwards. So I'll I'll look up the gas immunity. Okay, I'm going to take a range. If attack. you want to do the the ranged attack, so I've got one same as before space left. I get an orange and three. So it's yellow. not a skill; it's a trait. It's a miniature with this trait would ignore all wounds from gas tokens. Gas tokens. Yeah, so it does not change the damage that you would take from dangerous terrain. Right, so okay. the chemicals on the floor are still going to hurt him. They're still going to hurt him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so I've got two automatic got two re -rolls free rerolls. Of the yellows. Okay, so there we go. So we've got four, four successes. Four successes. The villain does not have any cubes to defend. Oh. Okay, so, so that takes that's, out. That's that goal. One. Good. Yeah. Okay. Good. Right, ball. Now, do you want to move and now do I some think I can. Up? Now I can use my uh, climbing. Yeah. I need to do. So let's have a look at Nightwing. Very similar to Batman. If Nightwing chooses the movement action. You mm. haven't moved yet this round. Yep. So you get your two free movement points added to your move point pool. Okay. And with those two free movement points, we can do exactly the same as yeah. what you did. So I'll climb down. So this is a climb level of one, but Nightwing actually has parkour two. So Nightwing is, uh, yeah, more agile than Batman, um, but the climb level cannot be reduced to less than zero. Mm -hmm. So basically the climb level is ignored for Nightwing. So it's one movement to move to there. And the second movement. And then it'll be another movement to move yep. into there. So That's Nightwing is now movement. in there. That's your free movement Okay. All used up. Okay, so I'm going to stay there. I'm not going to move any further. Okay. Otherwise, I'll be hindered. So I'm going to attack. Uh, well, I think the villain's going to use the hazmats because they are the cheapest. Right. So I'm going to go for the hazmat first. Yep. And I'm going to use a melee attack. Okay, so let's have a look at Nightwing's character. So we've seen the ranged attack. Melee attack, slightly different for you because you get an orange dice with a reroll. But in a similar way to the Batarangs, you're equipped with two batons. And because they are both encumbrance one, and you've got ambidexterity one, you can use both of them. So for you, it, Powerhouse. Is, it is one orange dice and two yellow, but you don't get the elevation bonus, but you do get your martial arts. Mm -hmm. And I get re-rolls on the battles. And you've got, you've got one orange re-roll and two yellow re-rolls. So basically, you've got re-rolls of all of the dice. <laughs> get ready. Pa-pow. Kapow. That's, now, a, that's a kapow. Do you want to re-roll any of the dice? Well, I don't want to re-roll the orange. In fact, you don't. Um, because Peter has used all of his He's energy, used all his dice anyway. He's not yeah, going to be able it, to do anything. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, that's so, so the hazmat guy is removed. Hazmat's gone. And Nightwing also has the combo attack. Yes. The same as Batman. So you... And you can't use your weapons in a combo attack. So it is just it's one, one orange, orange dice with a re-roll. But you do get the martial arts. Now, this brute has two automatic defense successes. Okay. So, you're going to need two in total. There we are. Two plus the martial plus arts martial is three. three. The brute has gone. Good work, It's Nightwing. a good first round for the heroes. It is. Um, okay, now I'm thinking of moving. Hang on a minute. You haven't spent a cube. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, that was... Uh, yeah. Well, now, this is at that. the point where you might want to carry I on might, taking I might want to stay, actually. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to get exhausted. Now, Batman has only spent one energy cube. So yeah, I, you can do much more. I can't definitely you? want to do something else. I'm not sure. So overall, mm. what was our strategy? Was it to try and take out Scarecrow, or you take out Scarecrow possibly with the ranged attacks, and then Batman jump over here and try and get into the room and hack the computer? I think so. Was that our plan? The the, the, the danger is Scarecrow. Yeah. Um, moving into. Well, well, yeah, but you can stay outside the room and I can stay out and keep hitting in. him. Oh, I can throw in, yeah, yeah, if he goes in. Okay, so I think I think I'm going to activate Batman next, and I'm just going to have a look at this map reference sheet. Now, the map reference sheet. This might look really complicated, but to be honest, having played this scenario once, I kind of got to know these. I don't actually need to look at this anymore. Mm. I'm showing it now, obviously, because I'm explaining how the game works. Mm. But actually, it's fairly logical. Mm. So moving from here to here is a climb level of one. Moving from here to here is one. Or you could move straight to there for two, etc., etc. So Batman is currently here. 
If I wanted to, I could climb up to here and try and beat up the prisoner that was there. But I think that's that's not in my best interest. I think I want to be jumping up here and then... And, then and you can the, jump across, Yeah, so you? these black arrows here, this is a jump. We haven't covered jumps yet, but they're very simple. They basically add to the movement cost, just in the same as climbs. So I'm thinking Batman's going to go up here onto the barrels and then possibly jump over here. So let's have a look at what I'm going to do. I think from where I am... Uh, now, I, there's this hazmat guy here. I could ignore him. I could just go round here and, and beat up this prisoner and then, and then climb up there. You could, however... What are you thinking? I'm thinking that this hazmat guy is going to drop into that, oh, that space to, this. to take that air, air conditioning oh, okay. and release the fumes. Because we're going to be up against where you are, particularly going to be up against the fumes. Yeah. So let's touch on that just for a minute, because we did say at the start that any villain miniature can try and turn down the ventilation units. Okay. That's not quite true. It isn't every villain miniature. If we just have a look at the command post, um, to turn down a ventilation unit was a complex manipulation of difficulty three. I think it was something like I think that. That's what you said. Okay, yeah. yep. and not all villain tiles can do complex manipulations. So if you just put that tile on the on the zoom in point, if you look down in the bottom left, they are the four things: melee attack, ranged attack, manipulation, and thought. So you can see that the hazmat thugs cannot do a melee attack. They can do a ranged attack. They can all do. They can also do manipulation, but they can't do a thought action. Right. So the hazmat thugs are able to turn down the ventilation units. But if you put, say, the brutes with the shotgun on, if we look at these, they do not have, they're good at ranged attacks, but they do not have the manipulation, they don't have anything there. Mm -hmm. So although the rules say all, vill all villain miniatures can try and do it, that's not completely true because they can't, for example. Okay, right, let me just look up what it was to do it again. I think it was a complex manipulation of difficulty three. Yeah, complex manipulation of difficulty three. Right. Okay. So. Yeah, I think I think you might be right. Even though it's going to cost more, if we don't get rid of this hazmat guy. Well, I was thinking, um, is there? Uh, he's elevated. Mm -hmm. Do I have a disadvantage? No. Okay. No. So I, I mean, I, I could try but, that. But he will have an advantage. Against against you. Me. Oh, you're thinking you. I'm thinking I might. Ah, you can't. Take, oh, I can't because I've no. run out. So Nightwing can't do any yep. more ranged attacks yep. this turn because you're right. You're yep. all, you're yep. right. You're limited. Okay, fair enough. Um, I think I need to. Okay, so Batman is going to choose the movement action for a second time because it is the second time I've chosen the movement action. I don't get my free movement points, which means I'm going to have to buy movement points. And you buy movement points by placing energy cubes in the move space here. And all energy cubes moved here get this amount of movement points, which is pretty much one mm, for much. everything in the game. I think, I think Bat Cow might be two, right? But other than that, it is generally speaking one energy cube buys you one movement point. So, um, Batman is going to try and move from here to here. This is a level one climb, so it would normally cost two movement, but because he's got parkour one, it's only one movement. I don't have any movement points, so I have to buy a movement point to climb up onto the barrels. All right. Then I'm going to do the same again, another movement point to move onto the top of the barrels, and now I am here, right in the middle of the map, with this hazmat thug. Uh, and then I'm going to do another melee attack. So I'm going to spend one cube, and it's going to be a red and an orange for the taser gun. Oh, it's big. With the one for the martial arts, it's four successes. The hazmat thug has gone because Peter has already spent all of his all of his defence. Now at this point, I've spent four cubes. I know I'm only going to get three back next turn. So I don't think I'm going to. I, I'm thinking that I won't take another turn here. Because okay. I don't want to run too short. I've got an idea. Go on. Yeah, I've got an idea. What's Scarecrow's um, 
First movement bonus. Oh, it's only two. I thought it was three. No, it is three. Yeah, Scarecrow's first movement bonus is three. No. No, it's not. It's two. It's is it the, two? The three is the... Um, oh, yeah, it's two. Is, is the, is the menace. menace index. Okay, right. So, so Scarecrow can't actually get into there unless he spends... This turn, unless well, he, spend he spends two, a, two, spends two, a cube two. to move. Yeah, it's worth... Remembering that he's he going to get far, he's going to get yeah, yeah, five yeah. back. I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. I jump over here now, and I end up here. Mm -hmm. And that means it's going to cost more for Scarecrow to, to move, move through me. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah, right. Let's just have a look at the jump level again. So to jump from here to here is a jump level of two, but Batman has parkour one which means it's a jump level of one. So the base movement cost is one. Mm. It is a jump level of one. So it's going to cost me two movement points. That is all of the movement points that I can buy. Right. I can't, I can't do yep. any more than four. Yep. But Batman has ended the turn here, right in the thick of it. So the only question is, do I try to... Uh, do movement it would cost me I've got parkour too so I could get here for one cube yeah um, I was wondering whether it would be worth attacking that's one goal I, thi I think he's okay yeah I think I'm thinking you I'm stay thinking, where you are yeah, maybe I'm thinking I, I'll be waste, uh, well not wasting cubes but I'll be wasting energy that I'm going to re regret later yeah because I'm quite a way away yeah we've, we've both played this game enough to know that if you spend all of your energy <laughs> you end up one, one big blast you end up in a bit of a a dangerous position a bit frazzled so Batman I'm going to stay is, there Batman yeah. is definitely finished yeah I'm finished yeah. right once all the hero players have decided that they don't want to take any more actions we now do our end of turn steps now the end of turn steps for the heroes is fairly simple all of the cubes that were spent go into the fatigue area and there's some there's some extra bits depending on the mission special rules but otherwise that's it that is the end of the hero's first turn so it is now over to the side that doesn't have initiative which is the villain's turn now the villain's turn works in a very different way let me show you the command post so the first thing that happens at the start of your turn is any of the cubes that you've spent on those three areas go to the fatigue zone. And then you recover the number of cubes shown in the middle. So you've got a recovery value of five, so you get five cubes back. Right. Now, Another one. the villain may activate zero, one, or two tiles from their river. When a tile is activated, you pay the cost shown above it, which is equal to the position that it is in the river. You slide the tile to the end, and then you activate all of the miniatures on the board of that type. Then you activate a second tile, which, if you've got the energy cubes, could be the same tile. So, Peter, which tile would you like to activate no, first? This is where I have to... Now, my... Scarecrow has lost his, uh, his goons that were in his space. Yeah. And so long as he's got two guys with him, he's protected. He, can't, he, he can't be attacked. Cannot be attacked. So yeah. he's looking a bit exposed at the moment. Um, my efforts at slowing you down by using defensive cubes failed. Yeah. Those loaded dice that we bought off eBay last night. Yeah, they, were, they worked, <laughs> they, they, they? really they worked. Were, they well. were worth the money. Yeah. Glad I bought them. <laughs> so um, the obvious thing to do is to activate the hazmat thugs to uh, attempt to manipulate the uh, air conditioning uh -huh. uh, units in order to increase the um, uh, the toxicity. Yeah. Um, now, Nightwing has the gas mask. Nightwing has the gas Batman mask. But Batman doesn't. Unless he picks that one up. Unless I pick that one up. Now, that's the obvious thing to do. However... Oh, here we go. Also, I would quite like Scarecrow to have a couple of goons in the square in the space with him to stop him having his lights punched out or mm. getting batarangd by um, Nightwing, Nightwing mm. which looks as though it could well happen. You've got line of sight from there, but even if you no. didn't... Uh, no, I don't. So if we just a... look at the line of sight tool from where Nightwing is, 
That's where Nightwing currently is. Right, so having jumped down from there, he I no can no longer has see this. Correct. Correct. But Correct. remember, he's got parkour two and two free movement points. So, so Nightwing's he can next turn, jump up there. He just goes there, yeah. and suddenly I he's can got see. Line the only the only place that's safe is the rooms. And he can't get to one at the moment because there isn't a door. Um, so the only way for him to end up in a space with two other guys is Scarecrow, for you mean. him, yep. Scarecrow, is for Scarecrow to move into Batman's space and to get two guys to move in there. Now, do not I the only have... way. Scarecrow could move through Batman and into a room. And then move another and thing. And you in. just move one thing in, and then you're safe. Okay, so moving through Batman is yep. going to cost, though, isn't it? So shall we talk about hindering modifiers for movement? Okay, yeah, we, sure. we, we briefly mentioned them earlier on, but basically, if you are moving out of an area with enemies, then it's going to cost you extra movement points based on the hindering modifier. Okay. Now, the hindering modifier for movement is... The total size indexes of all enemies in the area mm. minus the total size indexes of all allies in the area. Now, that sounds really complicated, but let's let's just have a look. All characters in the game have a size index. Batman's size index is 1. So, let's look at the situation here. Uh, it is 1, 2, 3. I think it's that one. Have I got the right one? Not quite. It's that one. Right. So, Scarecrow moving from here to here would be one movement point. Yeah. Yep. So it's a simp It's just an adjacent move. It's one movement point to move to there. Yep. However, if Scarecrow wants to move out of here, because Batman's there, there is a hindering modifier. The total size indexes of all enemies is one. The total size indexes of all allies, not including yourself, is zero. Is zero. Therefore, it, it costs, costs one, one extra, extra move. movement point to move out. Now... If the prisoner was there as well, total size indexes of enemies one, total size indexes of allies one, zero, could move through for free. So that's how hindering modifiers work. But the prisoner can't get there. No, but um, yeah, yeah, any 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 other miniature. Now, okay. if we just look at the command post, you will see everything in this game has a size index of one. I think. And that's the uh, oh, that's that's there. Yeah, that's the little figure that's got little figure arrows. with the with the arrows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all all of the enemy miniatures, all of the villain miniatures in this game have a size index of one. Yep. That's not true for every mission you'll play. Yep. The carnivorous plants, for example, have a size index of two. Yeah. The T Rex has a size index of <laughs> hundred. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, you you've got you've got options. So this is this is now interesting because I've only got I can only activate two two tiles in tiles total in total. So what I would like to do I'd like to do three things. I'd like my hazmat <laughs> guys to do the air conditioning. Yeah. I'd like to get scarecrow safe. into safe, which probably means in here, and moving another goon in with him. Now, can if if I did activate the hazmat yeah, can guy, move after you've done the can I move after I've done it? Yeah. Right. Okay. In that th case, I can do it just by activating two characters. So I can activate the hazmat thugs. Yeah. So as I mentioned, I pay the cost printed above the thing, which is one energy because it's so in position that one. Number one, position one. Yeah. Each position has an increasing number. So that, if I was to activate the scarecrow first, that would cost me three. Yeah. But um, I'm going to activate the hazmat thugs first, which costs me one. So I take a cube and I put it in there. Yep. You move the tile to the end. That goes there. Slide them all slide down. Slide them all down. And then you get to activate every miniature on the board of that type. Now, you only have two miniatures. You have one here and you have one over there. Yeah, the other one had an unfortunate yep. encounter with Batman. <laughs> so, the, um, the big difference between you activating your miniatures and when we have a turn yep. is that when you choose to activate this one, you do everything with that one and then everything with the other one. So I can't swap my no. activities and move him, then activate him, then move yep. It's got to be all of one figure. All of one figure and then all of them. Okay. Now, when a villain miniature activates, you have a first movement step you have a, an action step, and then you have a second movement step. So you are allowed to move 
do an action and then move again, but the first movement bonus of the character only applies the first time they move. So if you move before you do the action, you get your free movement points. If you don't move before you do your action, you then get your free movement points afterwards. And I can move before and after, but you it can costs move, me. Exactly. And, and just like the hero players... Mm, yeah, just as with Batman just now. The villain player may spend cubes in the movement area to and gain movement points. This, yeah. That's what that space that's what is that for. Is. And there's only three spaces for cubes Correct. in there, so I can only do that three times. Yeah. Okay. So which miniature would you like to activate well, first? Let's let's stick to the plan. Um, <laughs> hazmat guy over here. Yep. Whose name is Brian, by the way. Brian. Hello, Brian. Brian, Brian is going to have a go at switching on off the air conditioning. Okay. So Brian is not doing any movement before his action but he's going to try to do the mission special rule of turning down the ventilation units. Yeah. So if um, you just pop him over there on the uh, yep. on the thing, let's just have a look at Brian. Okay, so if you look down in the bottom left, manipulation skill for the hazmat thugs is one orange die and one white die. Okay, so and this is a these. complex manipulation of difficulty three. Oops. Okay, so I'm looking for three successes. You were very lucky on Thursday. I was very this. lucky. <laughs> I was very lucky. I acknowledge that. Um, I'm hoping to get lucky this time. No. Oof. No. Now you could pay to re-roll them, okay. but, but again, that's, that's, that's so using your valuable energy. Brian has proved to be a disappointment. Yeah. Brian uh, tries to turn the valve and goes, "Valve, what valve?" It's too He's hard. Not successful. It's too squeaky. But now he has to finish his move, and so, so what now he's going his to second do movement step. is move into here. And you've got two free movement points. Uh, and so he's he's, he's going to stop there. Okay. So he's used one of his two free movement yeah. points and mm -hmm. the other one is lost. Mm -hmm. Right. And meanwhile, Dennis, Dennis. is going to come across here. Does he know Brian? He does. Right. Okay. From a previous scenario. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dennis is going to have a go at this one. Yep. Oh, sorry. I'm on the wrong, uh, I'm on the wrong view. There we go. So Dennis has moved from here yep. into here and you're going to try and turn that And he's going to try and turn here. this ventilation... Switch. Come on, Dennis, you can do it. Come on, I know you can. You did it yesterday, you did it on Thursday. Yes! Ooh, very good. Well done, Dennis. It's just rolled Flip three successes. Up. So, what happens is that, goes that ventilation unit. Right, so toxic fumes have now entered the factory, and let's explain <laughs> what they do. So, as I mentioned earlier on, the toxic fumes actually affect every miniature in the game, both the heroes and the villains. And what they do is they increase something called a menace index. Now, we've not covered menace indexes yet at all, but menace indexes, uh, in a similar way that size indexes provide a hindering modifier to movement, menace indexes provide a hindering modifier to ranged attacks, complex manipulations, and complex thoughts. So they don't affect movement, and they don't affect melee, but they are going to affect ranged attacks, complex manipulations, and complex thoughts. Now... Nightwing has a compact gas mask, so Nightwing is not affected by this. Batman, however, is affected by the toxic fumes. So if Batman now wants to hack the computer, or tie his shoelaces, mm. or something like that, he's going to be affected by these toxic fumes. If he's moving and just doing melee attacks, he's not affected by them. And Scarecrow, for this mission, is immune to all of these toxic fumes. Right, you have activated your first tile. Second tile. Second tile. It's going to be it's going Scarecrow. To be scarecrow. Okay, so that's going to cost you two cubes. That cost me two cubes. Uh, and I move him across to here, slide him along. Yeah. And now what I could do is I could, I've got a free, I've got a free move. You've got of two, two free movement points. So I could move him to here. Yeah. Attack Batman and then move out. But if I attack Batman, I get a very Scarecrow is not good in melee. He's not really good with his fists. Um, and you would lose that. Free. So currently, you spent one of your two free yeah, movement points. I would You've lose. You've got one free movement point left. But, like the heroes, although we didn't actually mention this, if you don't use your free movement points, then at the end of that movement action, any excess are lost. So if you were to move in there with one, if you were to then perform an action, that one free movement point would be lost. So he could have a swing at Batman, but it would then cost him another cube to move out. It would actually cost you two. Two cubes to yeah, move out. Yeah, because it would be two movement points to move That's out. That's right. And you've lost your free one. And the likelihood of putting anything on Batman is quite low, because all he does when he fights he's is he's only got two... Oops, I've moved 
Yeah. Is that okay? He's got he's two, only got white, two dice. white dice. And he's... as we've found, white dice are a bit yeah. not that great. So he's not so good with his fists, is our scarecrow. So just a, a quick note about the dice. The yellow dice, the orange dice, and the red dice, there's a nice progression. So the yellow dice have three blanks, two ones and a two. The orange dice have two blanks, two ones and two twos. Uh, and the red dice have only one blank, and then two ones, two twos, and two threes. The white and the black dice are a little bit all or nothing. So the white dice have four blanks and two sides with two on. And the black dice have three blanks, a one, and two fours. So yeah, the, the <laughs> dice progression actually makes sense in terms of the colour coding of these three. Uh, and these two are, yeah, they work in a different way. So although the obvious thing might appear to be to rush in, smack Batman, and then rush out again, actually, because of energy management and because of his poor melee attack, all he's going to do is slip up yeah. by him into there, and so, that's going to cost one cube. It's going to cost you one cube because it's two movement points to move from there to there because of the hindering modifier. You have one free movement point left, so you have to buy an extra movement which point, is what which goes do. into the movement space. Which goes into there. Yeah. Yeah. To move Scarecrow into there. Mm -hmm. And that's the two tiles activated, so that is the end of my go. Right. Okay, so that's the end of the first round of the game, and we move on to round two. So we're going to flip this over. It is round two. It is the hero's turn. We need to decide if we're resting or we're staying active. I'm going to stay active. I'm going to go active, yep. and we're going to recover three cubes because we're playing with the with the variant. Okay. We get three cubes, and off we go. We we've, we we've, we've, we've got options. Now, I I I I think I'm going to do something fun. I'm going to no, do something. Do don't do that. Don't I'm going to do something do. that I've not done before. <laughs> Sounds like disaster. <laughs> so. We've been discussing for the last 24 hours which, <laughs> yeah. which bank gadgets to bring with us. And five minutes before we started filming this video, I went, I'm going to bring, this, I'm going to bring this freezing grenade. So I think I'm going to throw it. Well, I hope you'd forgotten you had it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to explain how the grenade rules work. Basically, I'm going, to get a, I'm going to get a penalty because of the toxic fumes. It should be fine. But it's only one. It should be fine. Okay, so basically the grenade skill means that I can throw the grenade, it is a complex manipulation, and the difficulty of that complex manipulation is the distance that I'm throwing the grenade. Right. So, if we look at the map, which preset am I going to use? Let's use preset 5. Is that is that a good one? Yeah, that's a good one. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Okay, so this is what's, this is what's happening here. There we go. Right, let's just define that. Preset 5. Right. So, the distance is 1. Yep. Okay? So I am throwing the grenade to an area that I have line of sight to, which I do. The orange lines, by the way, are different from the white lines, in that an orange line means you always have line of sight. And if you look carefully at these rooms, I said I'd talk about these, there's no line of sight markers in this room which means the only way that you have line of sight into this room is across one of the orange lines. Right. And most of the maps work like that. It's a very would, clever would mechanism. Would you have line of sight from here no. through that one and that no. one? No, it's got to be an adjacent... Okay. Uh, it's basically because you're, you're in the doorway. Yep. So, I have line of sight to here. The distance is one. Mm -hmm. So I am doing a complex manipulation of difficulty one. And... Very similar to melee and ranged. This is the mi mi manipulation space. I'm going to roll one orange dice for each cube that I spend on here. Yeah, you could spend more. So I need to decide mm. how many dice I want to roll. Now, as we mentioned, the toxic fumes, there is one level of toxic fumes in the factory at the moment. And because Batman doesn't have a gas mask, that increases the menace index for complex manipulations, ranged attacks, and complex thought. So basically, I've got a minus one success. Whatever I roll, mm -hmm. it's minus one. So I need to decide... And you need three. No, no, no. no? So three is the level of the explosion. Ah, okay. I need one 
because what you need is oh, because distance. of distance. You did say the that. Further yeah. you yep. throw it, yep. but one one thing that's very clever about uh, throwing a grenade is unlike other tests. So let let's say when um, when Peter was trying to turn this valve, he needed three successes. Mm. If he didn't get three successes, it was a fail. Grenades, if you don't get the required number of successes, you actually work out how many successes you did get, and that's how far you threw the grenade. <laughs> so if you're trying to throw it four, and you only roll three successes, it drops short. It drops short. And if you roll no successes, it goes off in your area. <laughs> so I'm... Not a good look. <laughs> no, don't drop it. Don't no. drop the grenade. I'm a little nervous about this, so I think I'm going to... You could go and get the gas mask. I might do that in a minute. Oh, you mean go and get the gas get mask, the gas first. mask up, wear it, bring it back. Yeah. yeah how that, many? That negates the how negative much? effect. How many? What's oh, your free oh, movement? I'm tempted. I've got two free movements. Two. So I could move into you here. You could get there. But you have it, to then pick it up, don't you? You pick it up. So picking up an, an equipment is an automatic manipulation. Right. Now, automatic manipulations are different from complex manipulations. You have to spend one cube. But you don't roll anything, it's automatically right. successful. Okay, so I could use my free movement to go to there, spend a cube to pick up the gas mask, wear the gas mask, spend another cube to move to there. And Have you got enough encumbrance capability? It's only one. It's I'm only not one. carrying You're anything. You're okay. Right, fine. I'm not carrying anything. That's actually a good point because although it's going to cost me more cubes right now, in the long run, you'll be safe from you'll be safe from the fumes. Well, what what else do I need to do, which is going to be affected you, by the this fumes? complex manipulation? That, but that's it. Nothing else. What about what about the um, oh, manipulation yeah. here? Yeah, we've got one manipulation. Remind each. remind me what that is. Typing the code into the computer. We but didn't we didn't explain that. There's something I forgot to mention at the start. So, entering the safe codes is a complex manipulation of difficulty one. You don't just go in there and turn it over. You have yeah, to you actually have to do, do something. It. Oh, but I want to save my energy. No, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So I could, I could bring it to you and be, you know, I could Isn't actually that? come this way. That's going to cost you energy. But it's going to cost me a lot of energy to do so. I mean, I was thinking of hopping across here or even hopping this way. Okay. So I, mean, I do have batarangs, and I was thinking that if we can keep, uh, if we can keep Scarecrow pinned down, or make it more difficult for go, Scarecrow. Go through what your plans are for this turn. Okay, I was then, thinking, and then we'll see. Are uh, you because you've got parkour too? I've got parkour too. So you too, don't really so need the stairs. You can just no. Come, I could jump across. Up here. Yeah, I could jump. Okay, my thinking was this is a good this this. This area or this area is mm -hmm. a good place for me to be, so that I can use uh, ranged attack with the batarangs into the rooms. Into the rooms without going into the room and being menaced by the scarecrow. Yeah. Um, so I can stay off a bit of a distance. Although I am good at melee because of my batons, I just think that that's that's going to become such a a numbing <laughs> presence in the room once he's gone in there. He's only got to move one more dude and mind you it's difficult to move scarecrow now because it's going to cost seven so scarecrow is going to be difficult to move at the moment so i'm just thinking the villain might be looking at moving the brutes and the prisoners next move because you're right if your plan is to come up here and pick up the gas mask yeah you could potentially I could throw it to you. You can throw it to me, or you can give it to me if you're in the same area as me. For a cost uh, and it would cube. be good for me to be here or here anyway. Yeah. I'm the hat that. Sure. Can you just uh, the villain? Can you just say which of your units can do the uh, can manipulate the? Uh, well, I'm not sure I'm willing to share that information. Oh, are you? Okay. <laughs> no, the hazmat thugs and scarecrow are the only two. No, uh, no, no. Prisoners can. Oh, the prisoners. Oh, the prisoners can as well. The prisoners yeah. have yeah. got that um, little symbol, the little claw symbol, yeah, which so means the, they can do a manipulation. Yeah, the prisoners can do manipulation actions. Right. So I'm thinking, as the prisoners are reasonably cheap to use, he might be trying to. And he's got four of them on the board. Fumes. He's well. got lots of them. There are four prisoners. There's one still right, on board. one right here. Yeah. Right. Conveniently next. Conveniently to the, next to the air, <laughs> air, air shaft, or the air conditioning unit. Um, it's not a million miles away for one of these two to go across. Okay. Um, 
and we are going to be we are going to be hindered hacking the computer unless you have the gas mask. I, I think I'll do. I think I'm going to go for it. So yeah, I choose the movement action. I add my two free movement points to my move pool. I spend one of them to move there, and I lose the other one. Okay. Because I'm now going to do a different action. Yeah. The action I'm going to do is to pick up the piece of equipment, which is an automatic manipulation. So automatic manipulations, I have to spend a cube, but then you don't roll anything, it's not affected, and I take the gas mask. Yep. I now have one point of encumbrance, but that's not going to affect me at all. So I'm now immune to two of those mm. to two of those tokens. I'm now going to choose the movement action a second time. Um, but this second time You'll have I'm to gonna, pay. I, you yeah, finish? I have to pay because I've my, my free movement points mm -hmm. have gone. So I have to spend one cube, which I put into my my movement area, and I'm gonna move Batman back to here. Then I am gonna throw the grenade. <laughs> <laughs> so I I am now gonna and because I now Oh right, yeah. You've paid yeah. You're right. Beca because I've got the gas mask, I'm immune to the toxic fume, so I only need one success. Yes, because you're throwing it straight in. A distance of one. One success on an orange. 50%? No. No. It's four in six. So here's, here's my thinking. I'm either going to spend two cubes. To guarantee it. Which would, it would not quite guarantee it, but there would mm, be yeah. a 11% chance I fail. Mm. One in nine. Or I just spend one cube and then re-roll it, it again. if I fail. I think I'm going to go for that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just going to spend one cube... For a manipulation. To throw the grenade. Now, if you look carefully, the grenade has this icon on it. That icon on a piece of equipment means it's one use only. So you notice that the taser gun, the armband computer, yeah. the gas mask, they don't yeah. have those icons. Mm. But the freezing grenade, that has that icons. Also, the perforating batarangs, the exploding batarangs, they're all one use only. Your mm. batarangs... Mine, got mine are good. They come yeah. And your dice roll is happening in your space, not in mine. Correct. So I yes. can't make you re-roll them. Yeah. So Scarecrow has a very, very powerful skill called Misfortune 2. It's kind of like the clover with the bit missing. Um, that means that if there are any rolls whatsoever happening in Scarecrow's area, Scarecrow can force us to re-roll two of the dice. And we had that on Thursday. And it was amazing. Where, well, not for us. <laughs> no. um, but everything we tried to do... Scarecrow's misfortune. Because Batman is not in Scarecrow's area, not affected by the misfortune. Also, it has to be said, not affected by the menace indexes of enemies either. So the menace index that we kind of mentioned about the toxic fumes, that also applies if there's enemies in your area. So if Batman was in here and wanted to do something that was affected by menace indexes, I'd be affected by all of these mm, as well. And, mm. and Scarecrow has a menace index of three. Anyway, I'm rolling one dice. So I've spent one cube. I'm rolling a dice. I just need one success. I don't get any bonuses, but I don't get any penalties. Two. I got the successes. Wow! So what happens is the freezing grenade has gone off, and the freezing grenade has uh, two abilities on it. First of all, it has a level three explosion. Drop we, it here. No, no, that's okay. okay. So yeah, there's a level three explosion happening in that area, and it's also going to create a frost token. Now, explosions in an area mean that every miniature in that area must roll yellow dice equal to the level of the explosion, uh, and they take that as as pretty much direct wound. You you can't defend against it. You can re-roll it if you really wanted to. So, Peter, which miniature is going to be hit by the explosion first? Oh dear. Well, they've all got to take it, haven't they? I'll put the, uh, I'll put the freezing token think, on as well. Sorry, Brian, you're up. Um, uh, oh, Well, you got lucky there. Whoa, that was lucky. Because one of the dice one was on a two. actually hit. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, fine. That's good. That's it's good. Fine. But that was a two. Do you and want then, to re no, 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 it's no, fine. It's and fine. that die hit it and knocked it off from a two to a black. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, that's good. Okay. That's fine. So, so Brian's all right. Brian's all right. Good old Brian. <laughs> um, okay. Who's next? Kevin. 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 Oh, oh, look at that. 
Right, hang on. Have these guys got armour? Hang on, I'm just going to email the guy that sold me this grenade because there's, there's something wrong with it. Acme grenades. Now, now, what we need, what we need is four points of damage. He's, he's used up all of his blanks. Right, scarecrow. Oh, this, four, this, we need four now. This could be devastating. This is the one this that matters. Could be good. Yeah, this, this could be good. Matters. This could be good. This is the one that matters. Okay, I've got some re-rolls though, haven't I? You can. Yeah, because it's you that's rolling. You that's rolling, so I could okay. re-roll uh, if okay, I wanted yeah. to. Ah, and it is four. Oh my god, and it is four. So <laughs> the situation is right now, <laughs> Scarecrow is about to take four wounds, which would kill him. Which would kill him. Now. The important thing, so the last time we played this game, it was the player who caused the explosion who rolled the dice. And you might think that's what you do, because if, if I'm attacking, I should roll the dice. But it's very important that it's the player who is being affected by the explosion who rolls the dice. And mm. that is because you can only ever pay to re-roll your own dice. So get, get, in, get out of the habit of, I'm attacking... Mm. Therefore, I'm rolling the dice. With a grenade, it's different. So because Peter rolled the dice, Peter is allowed to re-roll those dice. Well, I'm going to have to. You're going to have to. Do I have to choose before I roll them? So, no. Paid re-rolls, unlike free re-rolls, can be done one at a time. Okay. So let's do that. So you spend one cube into your re-roll area, you pick one of the dice, and you re-roll it. I think I'm going to pick this one. (laughs) You sure? (laughs) There you go. Well done. Right now, Scarecrow is not dead. He's on two. He's that taken two wounds. Him on two. And I could use the other cube if to you, re-roll the other If you really one. wanted to, you could. I've got lots of but energy. in terms of energy management, I I've got don't. lots of energy. Oh. Uh, that's that's cool. I've got one cube left. That's your last cube. No, Scarecrow is going to take that. Yeah, on so the, the, way that, um, the way that the wounds work for any of the big villain miniatures is there is a little life point marker down at the bottom and you track their life points uh, with a cube. So, yeah, so you've gone four, down from four, down three, to two. Two. There we go. There you go. If it ever goes to zero, then uh, the, the villain is neutralised. And unlike the other miniatures, which can be brought back can be brought back with reinforcements, the main villain guy can't be brought back. And there's a little face there to show you it's Scarecrow in case you have In case you have more. Case case you have more. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was fun. Now, right. what, we, what we've also got is we've also got this frost token that is in the area, because this whole area is now covered in ice. And what this means is that this has increased the level of difficult terrain mm-hmm. by one. Now, difficult terrain means it's going to cost you one extra movement point to move out of this area. At the start of the hero's next turn, it will flip over to the dissipating side. It still has the same effect on the game. And at the start of the next turn, it will be removed from the board. Okay, so that... That's a big move. That was cool. that was good. That was good. <laughs> I, I, we I, I'm that. glad I brought no, that freezing that. grenade. Um, I might just have a okay. You have a break. A quick break while you have a turn. Okay. So I th- I'm what thinking. Do you want to do? Well, I'm thinking that um, that we need you to be uh, doing the manipulation on the computer, the hack the computer. Yeah, that's going to cost me a lot. Um, therefore, I need to do a bit of crowd control. So I'm thinking of coming across. Okay. Yeah, because the need, grenade didn't have the grenade, its intended effect. It didn't. He didn't actually. We still, do, we still lo- only lost two Scarecrow. damage, and we can't attack Scarecrow. And Scarecrow has only got one movement point to to go in there. Um, oh, because of the yeah. So, um, so I'm thinking I will go. You need to get up here. I need you? to get up. So I need to go. I don't want to go into the dangerous terrain. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to hop up yeah. using. I've got parkour two. You do. So I'm going to use free movement first of all. So this. Let me just have a look at this area here. So to move from here to here is a climb level of two. So it would cost Joe Public three movement points to move from there to there. But because you've got parkour two, it only costs you one movement point to move to here. Yeah. Now, you've still got I've one still of your free, one movement, of my free points movement points left. Do you want to use it or do you want to stop and uh, go don't this want... This is interesting because you're yeah. generally inclined to think, oh, he's a bad guy, I beat him up. Mm. But... Uh, and he's, need he's actually you can jump, in the middle you? of the, he's in the middle of the river. You can yeah. jump from the top. Of one of the things I you think can I do is try you can I could try. You can jump, jump across here, here. I think I'd try jumping across. So you're you're going to ignore this guy. I'm right. going to ignore that. We have our most complicated movement example now, <laughs> which is good, <laughs> it's good because it's combining rules we've already come across. So the default cost to move is one. Mm-hmm. This, according to the map reference sheet, is a jump 
level 2. But because you've got parkour 2, that cancels out the jump level of 2. So we're on to a, a cost of 1. However, there is an enemy in your area. The enemy has a size index of 1. Mm -hmm. There are no allies in your area. So there's a hindering modifier of 1. So it will cost me 2, two. to get across. Yep. Okay. So there well, you I'm going to do that. That is, that is how the game works. It might seem complicated with a lot of maths. But once you've played it a few times, yeah. Yeah. it, it all okay. works out. That's so it's fine. going to cost you two movement points. Cost me two to get from this Now, there. you still have one of your free movement free points movement. left. Ah. So you're going to have yes. to buy one, one more, extra movement, one more point movement point to okay. move from there. That's good. Fortunately, there. I'm actually able to, to, to have five. You can yeah, you, you're very so agile. Move, you can move, do, move you can do a lot. lot. Okay, so I, I've now got a jump of two across, yep. uh, which I'll do. So no free movement, so, so it would cost me Nightwing a movement is now point. Here. Where where are you gonna go oh, next? I was gonna jump across here. Uh, where can I go? I can actually go to this one. Yeah, so ah, if, I we look, if we just look at the map reference sheet, you can see that from these barrels here you can jump to here yeah. for two or here for three. three. Yeah. That and that's a really good spot to be so you in. You get your parkour bonus again. Yeah, so parkour will... bonus is permanent. Okay. okay. So it's a jump of three. So that that is reduced to a jump of one, one. for you. So I use one more cube. Two, because the default cost is one. Default, and then one more. And it's more, a jump level a jump. of one. Okay. So you jump over the prisoner, you stand on his head as you're going over him, yeah. and you end up there. Right. Now you've spent a lot of cubes on moving. I have. Um, I, I don't want to overstretch myself again, because we know what happens when you run out of energy. Um... I stay there? Could well, I'm 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 thinking that I could have uh, an attack uh, of this, yeah, uh, of this brute because he's likely to be. Yeah, now you don't get the soon. elevation bonus. No, but so I do be... have a, I do have my batarangs. Yeah. So I'll spend one for a ranged attack. Now I just I'm, one or mm. well, I'm going to get an orange and two yellow. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, the yeah. question. Well, okay. He's just, only got one die. He's only got one cube left, so he can't defend himself can't, very well. He can't defend. As I say, this this game. There's a lot of dive rolling in this game. Mm. Energy, energy management is huge. I don't think I want to spend two. Okay. Now I'm going to spend one. Go for it. Just, just, just as a question. Yeah. The line of sight into that room is not. There's no line of sight. There's a wall there. Yeah. So is this, this is this is a wall. Yeah. You cannot you cannot see through yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And again, if we just look. At the map reference sheet, you can see there that oh, it, it's black. a wall. Yeah. There, is, there is yeah. no way. Yeah. yeah, there is no way through. Yeah, fine. Okay, I'm going to use my batarangs. Okay, I have I have placed my cube there. All right. So it's um, one orange. It's one orange and two yellow. Two yellow. I'm going to attack. Your other option is go in there and do melee, because you're actually better in melee because of the martial arts. You got those batons. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The only reason that you would want to stay outside. Um, is because if it was um, well, if 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 yeah, if he was in there. Yeah, you're not good in. Yeah, I'm not good. I'm not. I'm not good. I'd, I'd need to step out. Yeah, but if, against the brute, you might be slightly yeah, better yeah, in melee. Yeah, yeah, actually, that's true. I'm just thinking if you're going no, in there anyway. Okay, I'm going. I'm going to go there. You, it'll cost you a movement point to it's go in. It's a movement point to go in. Before I do that, so let's get this in order. Point. Yeah, this is going to be really short. And then you can start looking at the computer. I could, but I'm really quite I'm, poor. I'm better at looking yeah. at the computer. You um, might want to go in there and have a rest. Yeah, I think I think at the moment that's what I'm going to do. So I'll spend one movement point. To go in. To go in. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm going to spend a melee. Yeah. So this which, time which it's gives an, orange. Me an orange and two. So we're getting an orange die with a reroll. Yeah. And two yellow dice with, with rerolls. Re no elevation bonus because it's melee. But as long as you get, get a martial arts. success, mm. you get your martial arts bonus. Okay, so I That's do get three successes. I do get a martial arts, and the brutes got two, two damage. Defense. Yeah. Okay. So well, I'm going to reroll. Might as well have your three rerolls. Do the that other. anyway. There you go. There you go. Five He's not, not going to defend against that. Can't do, surely. No. Yep. Okay. Thank you then. Mr. Shotgun Guy has gone. Right. And now that was the last. Oh, we got some more rules Ooh, we can explain. Yes. Right. Well spotted. So that is the last of the brutes. With shotguns, miniatures that's been removed from the board. So what happens is the tile is neutralised. It's flipped over, and it is moved to the end of the river. 
okay, and it slid down. So that tile right now is effectively useless. It's but in the way. you can still reinforce, and as soon as you reinforce uh, at least one of those miniatures, it will it will come back. The tile will come back. There is an other. Uh, there is another thing that Peter can do. Is called he can dredge the river. Now dredging the river basically means removing that tile from the game. Now there's no need to do it at the moment because it's at the end. It's not costing you anything. But when that tile starts to move down the river, mm -hmm. it basically means that all of the other ones ahead of it or behind it will cost one more. So by dredging the river, you can get rid of it and it potentially makes your other ones uh, cheaper. But for now, is Nightwing going to do anything else or is that it? You've done a lot. You've only got two cubes. Yeah, I'm not doing any more. Sorry. Doing any no, more. no, no, sorry. Just checking the yeah, neutralization yeah, yeah. rules, make sure I've got it right. Uh, when a villain miniature is neutralized, it's removed from the map and placed in the command pool. When all miniatures corresponding to a character tile have been removed from the map, the tile itself is neutralized. Remove it from the river, slide the other ones to the left, place the and flip it over. Yeah, okay, we got it right. Yeah. Now, Batman hasn't done that much this turn. Well. But. Brought down Scarecrow to two yeah, hit points. but next turn, I want to go into the computer and start hacking it. I I have already moved this turn, so I don't have any free movement points. I don't have any ranged attacks. Mm. I'm going to stop there. Okay. So yeah, yeah. that is the end of the hero's turn. Yep. So we move our cubes that we've spent. We put them into our reserve area. We say that we're done, and play passes to the villain for the villain's turn two. Now, both of the heroes um, have gas masks. Correct. Which negates... Is two of the tokens. Two levels. Two so, of any, so if I was to open another... Uh, it, it, wouldn't you, do it. Wouldn't it would hurt have, you more than it, it would, would hurt, hurt me. It would hurt me more than it would hurt them. So yeah. uh, there's no point doing that. Yep. Um, so, start of your turn. You yep, move your that. cubes that you spent into your reserve zone right, and then so you recover five. Let's step at a time to... Three, four, five, go across to there. Right. And then uh, these guys can start to activate. Um, if I was to activate the hazmat thugs to shoot Batman, that might seem attractive, but it's going to cost me five, which is five most of cubes. my cubes, so I don't want to be doing that. I probably want to be doing these guys that are down here, because mm -hmm. they're cheaper. They're um, a lot so cheaper. What's the movement of the prisoners? Three. Didn't want that. Yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty nasty. Remember, they've got the sneak attack skill. Yeah. So the sneak attack AKA skill. AKA gang up. So the prisoners, if you look there, they've got three free movement points whenever they move. But that skill down in the bottom right is sneak attack. Now that essentially means, in simple terms, if there's more enemies than... Sorry, if there's more good guys than enemies, they, they, they sneak up on it. It's, it's like ganging up. Technically... The way that the skill works is if that the enemy, uh, if if the number of friendly menace indexes is equal to or greater than the number of enemy menace indexes, then you get one uh, bonus success on an attack. So if there was one prisoner against Batman, it wouldn't. But if there was another, if there was a, if there was somebody friendly to the prisoner in there, then you get one bonus success. So yeah, it's it's like ganging up. So these prisoners have been left behind over here. Um, for them to get into the action, uh, he's on the wrong side of a wall, so he would have to go... Yeah, so this is a climb of two to get from there to there, or it is a jump of two to get from there to there. Right, and that's... So if he's got three movement points, he could jump to there, there but to then there. he wouldn't be able to make it, it any further have, doesn't unless have I spend a ton of yeah. cubes. And he... He well, could climb, he could climb, climb up to here... And that's going to cost him three movement, three points, movement points because it's a climb of two. Or he could do the same to get to there. Yeah. Okay. Just thinking you could potentially get three prisoners into here and seriously beat up on Batman. Well, we could. <laughs> you leave yeah. me to hack the computer. <laughs> no, you can't quite get three in uh, because of the hindering modifier from Nightwing. Nightwing has a counter-attack. He does. 
So, so yeah, if let's I just... was to attack Nightwing... With, with melee, yeah. and if you don't neutralise him, he counterattacks with two yellow dice. So he would get two yellow dice back on a mm-hmm. counterattack. With martial arts. With martial arts, which means that somebody with a, a hit point, with one hit point, yeah. mm. going in to attack him. Batman does not have counterattack. FYI. Hmm. Well, it's got to be done. Yeah. Prisoners, activate them. Costs a cube to do so. Right, so that. which prisoner is going to be activated That's first? Good question. I think let's start at the back and then move them up. Yeah. So he's going to drop. No, he's going to jump. He's going to. You, you, he's, you he's, can drop. We haven't explained the dropping rules yet. Well, no, you but you probably he's, don't he, want to. He's watched, <laughs> he's watched Batman and, and Nightwing and he, he thinks, thinks I, I can, I can, do, that. I can do that. I can do that. And he just about makes it over there. Yeah. So it's one point for the base move, it's a level two jump. So, so that costs him three movement points, and the prisoner has three movement points. This so. one, can, he's got three movement points, and it's a level it's a two level two climb, climb to two. get from there to either here or there. So he can struggle up yep. to there. He clambers up there. Got three movement points. And then he can have an attack on Batman. And, and he can swing his nightstick at Batman. Yep. Let's have a go at that then. So, um, do you let's... want to just pop the tile over there? We'll yep. have a look at the prisoner's tile again. So the prisoners in melee have uh, one white and one yellow dice. No re-rolls for free. So let's see what you get. And oh! Come on, guys. Oh, dear. They've been to Stormtrooper College. <sighs> okay, so that's that one. Disappointing done. performance. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, Neville. This is going to have to go down on your performance, though. Um, management sheet um, uh, and then we've got so we've got him and we've got him yeah, now yeah. he if he's going to go through there has got to go through Nightwing yeah so it will be one to move in yeah but then it would be two to move out because of Nightwing's size index of one meaning you've got a hindering modifier of one I could choose to move in and not attack mm-hmm. he could just kind of menace hide, hide in the corner and pretend to hide be, behind the computer. To pretend to be a coat rack. <laughs> <laughs> Special skill. Um, and I've got him to move as well. Now he probably wants to move in here. The question is, does he then move in here and yeah, use the advantage the thing, of his that prisoner? You could just move him in here. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of doing yeah. because um, Scarecrow wants Scarecrow. to have this yeah. is uh, this is icy. Yeah, but it, that's the cost to move out, out, not in. Mm-hmm. Right. So he's going to go one, one to there. Yeah. And then it will cost two because of the uh, um, the menace, yep. menace. Uh, size, the size, size index, so movement. Uh, so okay. the, the, it's so slightly confusing, there. but movement, ranged attacks, complex manipulations, and complex thoughts are all affected by hindering modifiers. Okay, for movement, the hindering modifier is based on size index. Mm-hmm. For the other three, it's based on menace index. So it's it's still a hindering modifier. But the way the hindering modifier is calculated depends on the type of action it is. Yep. So he's used his three movement points. So that's him done. Yep. Uh, there's no point, as we've just established, for this prisoner to have any go at the air conditioning. We'll just leave that as okay. it is. Um, uh, there's a stun there is a stun grenade hiding in the corner, but you can't Do- pick up equipment. Okay. Equipment is purely for heroes. It's, oh. it's got a heroes only written, written <laughs> only oh, okay. on, the, on the box. Well, he, he did have a look at it, and then he saw that. <laughs> and he saw that, and he curses. thought, oh, I can't pick that up. I then. can't use this, because I'm not allowed. So he, he's going to put it back down again, um, and then he's going to move in here. So that's one to move in. So, question is, does he stay there, or does he move in there and have a pop You've got to have Batman? a sneak attack, haven't you? Well, sneak yeah. attack, it's there, it's... Uh, it's all there. Because I was thinking you might have wanted to spend one cube to move him here, and have three sneak attacks. Uh, toy, so two sneak attacks. You might have wanted done. him to stay there. You did want him to stay there, yeah. Back up for Scarecrow. Yeah. Uh, so let's move. Yeah, go on then. Okay. Smack. So we have Batman fighting two uh, two prisoners. prisoners. I'm, I'm going to define that as a prison because that's that's a good one. That. Okay. So the prisoners have, as we've discussed, uh, one white and one yellow dice, but then. Because the number of enemy menace indexes 
Um, hang on a minute. I'm just I'm just remembering the rules for sneak attack. I'm not sure you're going to get this. Let me just calculate this because of this, the fumes. Oh. So if you remember, the fumes increase the menace indexes oh. of enemies. So actually, there is a, there is two enemy menace indexes here against the one from this. So you wouldn't get the sneak attack because of the fumes. What about him moving through? That's, that's fine, because menace indexes do not affect movement. Okay. Menace indexes don't affect melee attacks, but they do affect the sneak attack skill. Right. So right now, mm. if, the, if the fumes weren't there, it's one friendly menace index against one enemy menace index, therefore you would get the sneak attack. But because of the fumes, there's actually two enemy menace indexes and only one friendly menace index. So the fumes is stopping you getting the sneak attack. Okay. But if you did send that one in there, then then the, the third one would. Would get to go. Get, get and you've now I'm, got two others. I'm optimistic that you haven't got any more um, uh, grenades. I do not have any more grenades. There's that one. But oh, there's that get one. get through that lot to get to yes. it. I think mm. the best thing to do is to stop there. You're going to leave me there. Because okay. at some stage in this scenario, if you're going to be successful, if, even if you do manage to play <laughs> the case, true. It's, it's true. We've got it. It's We've got true. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that true. That's a very good there. point. It's true. Very good point. So we're going to stand around that computer oh. table. Oh! It was all no. looking good. <laughs> Why didn't I think earlier? Yes. Yes. Anyway, so that's the uh, that's the prisoners. Um, yep. Yes. Uh, now. <laughs> oh. I might choose oh. not to activate my okay. second in order to save cubes. Yeah. It will cost me one to activate the uh, the the brutes with the, the chains. Mohawk, bro yeah. the brutes with chains. So that's him and him. So they could be getting in and doing some fighting, or we could just sit tight and wait and see what the hero is. That's interesting. Do. So let's. So you're not going to activate a second tile. Uh, I could activate the thugs, uh, the the these ones, crowbar, crowbar thugs, man. yeah, uh, and, and bring them in. But that's going to cost me two cubes. Um, this I could use to respawn. We haven't even mentioned that yet, but every mission. The villain player has a warning tile at some, somewhere in the river. And the effect of that warning tile is based on the mission itself. So if I just go back to the original view of the mission, uh, you will see on the right hand side that when you activate the warning tile in this mission, it is simply two reinforcement points. That's really simple. Some of the other scenarios, there's actually all sorts of complicated things that the villain can do. But in this mission, activating that warning tile is two reinforcement points which Peter can then spend to bring mm. some of the miniatures mm. in the character pool back. And and what I spend those points on is the, the cost of bringing these figures back is the number in the bottom right yeah. hand corner. Which is two for the brutes, one for the thugs. So I could get hit. So I, if I did that action, yeah. it would cost me three cubes. And you get one. And I would get, I it, could have this one. Yeah, and it comes on at the only reinforcement point, which is here. Which would be there. It's whether that's worth three cubes. No, it isn't. Uh, so, no, I'm going to do what I thought was going to be the right thing to do just now. I'm going to stick with that. Right. And I'm going to pass. Right, interesting. So it becomes... It's round three. Round three. Okay. Of seven. So... And how far are you towards your objective? Well, we Zero. haven't we've, got we've the first nothing. one yet. <laughs> but that might change. But that might change now. Well, you've got the computer. You could get the Well, yeah, code. but we haven't, yeah. we haven't hacked it yet. So, at the start of our turn, we choose whether we want to go active or to rest. I'm going to stay active and again we're using the variant rule today. So we get three cubes. What are you going to do? Mm. Are you going to rest? Is Nightwing going to have a sit down? Well, I think... There's a coffee machine in the corner. Yeah, right? yeah. I think I will, you know, because uh, my thinking was I could use Batarangs into here. Yeah. I've got to sort these guys out. Which I can do through the line of sight through oh, the door. Start of our turn. Yeah. That dissipates. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm. What was the index needed for the complex manipulation? The number of successes. Sorry, for hacking one. the computer. Yeah. Six. Ah, okay. Not going to get that. Are no. We? So. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll just. Uh, it's a complex thought. 
complex thought. Complex that's thought this to one. hack the computer. Yeah, not, so it's not an, manipulation. So it's, so it's orange. I Batman gets red dice uh, and for complex thought, and, and I have a hacking skill of two. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think the computer is my yeah. my area. Right. I've only got two. I shall have five. So you're going to rest. Uh, give me. I'm just looking at the number of melees, uh, the number of ranged attacks I could do. I could actually do four ranged attacks. Because I think this is going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. You could go in there and start beating them up with your batons. Oh, but then I've got then the scarecrows got, there. We've got this be affected by the misfortune. Misfortune. So I've got to stay outside. So I've got to use batarangs really. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to stay active. You're going to stay active. But I'm going to do pretty much crowd control. I think. So you get three cubes back. So you can then swap places with me. I get three cubes. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's it. That's done. So that prisoner being there has meant Batman doesn't have enough movement points to get into the room with the um, with the computer with my free movement the free points. movement points. But I think what if I were to move out first to your to here to give us advantage over the movement? Oh, beat him up. Be and then be up, your throw in there, there. Yeah, that and go in there. That, that's that's Absolutely, better, isn't it? Absolutely, that works. Right, so I'll do teamwork. I'll do movement. So, so let's I just zoom out a bit because we can't see Nightwing. Right, so your first action is movement. I've got you've got two, two free, free movement, movement points. points. So I'll move one, you move there and there. Two now. Yeah, no, this is fine. Okay, I that's just fine. thought about the toxic gases, but you've got the gas mask. I've got a so gas mask on. So I could, first of all, I could punch that in, or I could just throw stuff in here because you moving out of here is going to be neutralised. Is that right? Uh, uh, you. This is your movement. Yeah, you don't because have I'm to, here. I don't you, have to beat him no, up. No, no, no. So me I, moving I can, out. I can. I can is, do. There I is can no do, hindering modifier yeah. now because you're keeping him busy, and yeah. I can move out. Right. But conversely. If I move out before you oh, do a ranged then, attack, okay, then I'm losing. He's going to yeah. affect you. But if you do your ranged attack first, if I do it now, if, you if do I do it them now, now before you move, so a ranged attack yeah. is affected by enemy menace indexes. Yep. So if I wasn't there and you did a ranged attack, you'd get minus one success. Yep. But because I'm there, I'm keeping him busy. Nice. Which means you can do your ranged attack. Nice. Into the room. Okay. okay. So, so I used. The, I've finished my movement. That was all free movement. Yeah. So. I'm going to Who's use... your target and how many cubes? Okay, are so um, this is complicated, but it does all make sense. It, it, that's and the once thing. it starts to flow, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's really exactly good. what I've been saying uh, about the game for the last Brutes. few months. Is that every, it might it's complicated it's rule set, but it all makes sense thematically. And if you, if you can picture the things mm. thematically, then it then it does make sense. Okay, uh, I'm going for the brute with chains. Okay, ranged attack one or two. Um, We've got dice to defend, haven't you? Yeah, but we want him to spend those dice. Yeah, don't we, we do, we do, don't we? Yeah, yeah, you're going to get two free, two free, get two yellow free dice batteries. for the batterings. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I'm going to take two. I'm going to take okay, one. so you're spending two cubes for two, two cubes, orange dice. Two orange dice. Which you don't get re-rolls on. No. But you do get two get yellow dice. Two yellow and you dice get re with re-rolls on those. Okay, off we go. Oh, nice. That's not bad at all, is it? Free, so, free, free re roll on the yellow. Ooh. Ooh, six have, yes. have six successes. Ooh. Six. Who are you attacking? The brute. The brute with chains. Ooh. With chains. Six he, successes. He's got two. Six. Two armor. He's got two automatic defenses. I need to stop four of those in order, and that's going to cost me at least three cubes. Yeah. And then even then, it's not guaranteed. I'm going to have to let him go. Sorry. Nice. There you go. That's gone. Okay. Um. And I'm going to go again. Now, how many this time? There's, well, I've got, I've got a maximum of four, so I'm going to do one. One okay. against. One against. Uh, the next one's along. Are the th uh, well, the prisoners are right off there, so it'll be against the hazmat. So you don't think he's going to activate the prisoners next turn? In fact, he's probably no, because, not going to. No, because it's seven. Yeah, okay. So yeah. going for the hazmat guy. Yeah, hazmat guy. So he's only got one automatic one defense. One and two of these. Oh dear, this is rather bad. You can re-roll... I can re-roll that one. ...the yellow. Yeah. Um, it's, I could pay to re-roll... You could. ...the orange. You could. But it's only going to take one out at maximum. Yeah. So we've still got the problem there, but... Again, it's, it's probably not worth re-rolling re an orange when you could have an... 
a complete another complete game. Possibly. Yeah. Know. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean that forces him to defend because the hazmat thugs have only got one automatic defense. Yeah. Yeah. I think I will pay to re-roll. You are. Okay. Um, so yeah. we've not seen this yet. We've not seen it, but the heroes can pay to re-roll. They have a re-roll space, just like the villain, uh, and you put one energy in there. That allows you to re-roll one of your dice. Okay. Are you going to re-roll the orange? I'm going to re-roll the orange. There you go. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> that means you probably won't bother defending. Because you're going to need three successes to defend. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Nah. Batman's got tons of cubes left. I do. I'm gonna have. Yeah, I'm gonna have to rest. If I'm I gonna, if I decide to, to defend that, to it's probably gonna cost me three cubes to keep him alive. Yeah. I would very much like to keep the hazmat thug alive, but I ain't gonna. Sorry. Sorry, Brian. Okay. Sorry, Brian. Right. Good work. Finished. So. I might have made a different decision if you'd managed to successfully get that. I mean, I could do one yeah. more. I could do one more, which makes him vulnerable. I think leave it but, for now. Yeah. <coughs> so, Batman is going to choose the movement action. I have two free movement points. I move out of this area. You keep him busy so there is no hindering modifier. Yep. I then use the second movement point to move into there. Right. We're going to hack the computer. Good. So, come on, Batman. Hacking the computer is a complex thought. Of difficulty six, for which the hacking skill can be used. Batman has one hacking skill himself, and I have an armband computer that gives me another hacking skill. Hacking skill is basically going to mean that I get two free successes. So whatever, however many successes I roll, I add two to it. Now, because this is a complex thought, because of this mission, it is affected by the toxic fumes. But I'm wearing the gas mask, so I'm not affected by yeah. that. Okay, so I need to decide how many cubes I want to spend. Now, thankfully, Batman is really good at Red. thinking. <laughs> so, but I need... You need to do it. I, I need four. Need four. Let's just have a look at these red dice again. I'm definitely spending two. Yeah. And you get a bonus for your wrist computer. Yeah, so yes, I need wonderful. six, but I get two free ones. So effectively I need four successes. Right, okay. And I'm working out I'm going to spend a third cube. I would. I think you would. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to spend three cubes to perform a complex thought. This is a whole chunk of our scenario. And yeah, let's go for it. Because I can pay to re-roll if if needed. Got an automatic yeah. success. Yeah, I was maybe not going to mention that based on how it's going. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, here we go. Four. Well, there's the four. There's right. the four. Okay. It was worth doing three so, dice. Three. So four successes, plus the two for the armband computer. No menace indexes. Now it has to be said. Well, it doesn't have to be said, but I'm going to say it anyway. If there was a prisoner in there, I can still do this action, but the menace index of the of the enemies would have also affected me. Okay. Mm. So again, if you think about it thematically, if I'm in there trying to hack into a computer while there are enemies in my face, then the menace index of, of all enemies is going to reduce my chance of success. Thankfully, there was nobody in there. So we have successfully hacked the computer. Now, we represent that by removing the computer miniature from the board. Okay. So that means we've now got the access codes. The next step of our mission is that we have to be in here and here, and we have to enter the access codes, which is a complex manipulation of difficulty one, at, on the same turn. Right. Now, do I want to do anything else on my turn? I've used my two free movement points. I've used three to hack there. I think I'm done. Quick turn. All I did was move in and hack the computer. But I think I'm done. Unless you're thinking of mm. anything else. That... No, I, I'm. I'm thinking how Batman is going to get in into. Well, either one of us has got to get in here. Yeah. <laughs> and one's got to get or across just, just there. Move. All right. Yeah. Um, just, just spend loads of movement points. Loads of movement to get in there. Yeah. So I. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Yep. Yeah. We're, we're done. Yep. So at the end of our turn, any of the cubes that we spent go here, and it is the villain's turn three. 
So I get didn't use any. Didn't ah. So you just get those back. <sighs> oh, this I is bad. Fully Whoa. Yeah, it's fully cubed up. Fully cubed up. This is going to be bad. Right. <laughs> Sorry, shouldn't have done that. It's all right. <laughs> um, right. Well, I've got. What have I got? I've got these brutes, of which there's of only which one there's, left. There's one left. Um, I've got the uh, the beanie hat thugs. There's two of those. Of I've got two, but one of them is all the way over there. He's all the way over here. So he's got a he's way to go. having his pack lunch. And he's got three. He's got parkour points. three, so Has these it? are good for jumping. No, he's got elusive. We've not covered the elusive. Well, that means yet. he can get out without paying the yeah. Like parkour yeah, one. Nope. No. 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 It's elusive. I'm only, I'm no, it's the brutes. This. This. this they, guy's they've got, got parkour. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh. Well, we I could activate the prisoners. Shall we talk about dredging the river? Yeah. So to dredge the river, the villain player pays two energy cubes, but those cubes come from here and they are removed from the game. And then what that does is it removes the tile from the river and everything else slides down. That would make your prisoners cheaper. cheaper. Mm. But you probably don't want to do it right now because you don't have any cubes in here. You could pay them from there, but you probably want to spend them from there. And then do it. And then maybe dredge the river. It depends if you're planning on bringing the brutes back. But dredging the river is a, can be tactically useful at the right time. So these brutes have got three movement. Yeah. Dredging the river would also move Scarecrow cheaper. No. Well, the warning would go. That. Oh, the, the, oh, sorry, it's not the warning, no. The, no. Warning, the, warning, the warning is the reinforcement. Yeah, 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 sorry. Uh, so, well, this is interesting. Oh, now you're going to be bataranging in like there like crazy, aren't you? Well, yeah. at the moment, I'm... Um, Half dead on my feet. So, <laughs> yeah. Maybe I might not be doing that next turn. <laughs> because this brute, to get him here, is going to have to spend a cube. Yeah, he goes one, one, two, two, three, four. three, four, and he's got three to spend. So he has to pay an and extra. And then you cube. wouldn't be able to have an attack. And then you wouldn't be able to attack. Because you've not been attacking as much. Um, as you did say on Thursday. Where then, we, we I, Batman was half dead by this point. <laughs> yeah, he got he got surrounded and severely beaten up. I can't get. I can't. I mean, it's it's too late to stop you accessing the the codes. All I can do is stop you from putting the codes into yeah. the machine. Uh, so is the best thing to do to defend that space or to defend both spaces? Uh, that's the decision I've got to make. Really, I've got the um, these guys to activate. I think it, I might. I think I think I'm going to activate um, the him. Yep. Cost of one cube. Um, but I Where think I'm go? just going to move him into here to defend this spot. Um, thematically, I feel as though he should be charging in and whacking Batman. Yeah, I mean but... he's pretty good in melee. He gets two white and a yellow. It's all right. And then Batman, if when uh, when you wound, uh, we haven't seen this yet. We, have we? we haven't seen the heroes if being I attacked. Successfully really. put some attacks onto Batman. Yeah, and that takes you can defend him by taking cubes. By spending of, cubes, get defense, and if we get wounded, the cubes move to here. Okay. Okay. And the other thing then to do is to I could activate him. And start bringing him across. He's got three movement points, which so would be, be one, two, three, four. And that's as far as he would get, which is not very far. Or I could. I mean, you can try and drop. There is a thing in the game called drop. So instead of climbing, you literally just jump down. But there's a chance that you'll take damage. Yeah, you might be willing to risk that. Um, yes, I'm running out of guys. Mm. I've lost too many guys. Yeah. Um, and then I've got my hazmat. I've only got one of him left. So what I really need to be doing, I think, is to be spawning. So I think uh, I think I'll, I'll, um, if I move him into there. It makes it more difficult for Batman to move out. 
Oh, decisions, decisions. Uh, well, let's 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 be thematically correct. He's going to charge in and thump back. Yep. So he's uh, got two white and a yellow. He might just be cannon fodder, but he'll have a go. So that's four that's successes. Four. Did you want to pay to do any re-rolls? Hmm. Or I could just save those. Yeah, I mean, re-rolling a white dice is not great. Um, no, I won't. Okay, so here we go. We haven't had this yet, but I am being hit for four successes. Now, unlike uh, villain miniatures, heroes do not have any fixed amount of automatic defence. What they have, some of them, and in fact Batman does, Batman is going to have one orange die... In defense. Now I can also buy extra orange dice if I want to and each energy cube that I spend on here will buy me one extra orange dice. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to spend one energy cube. I'm going to buy an extra orange dice plus my orange dice that I get normally. So this is my defense. Well. <laughs> yeah, not very well defended there Batman. Now I could pay to re-roll. If I wanted to. Oh, it's funny how things change. Yeah. Um, That's currently four hits, isn't that it? That is currently four wounds. Wow. He's a big guy. He, he, he is a big guy. And I don't have, um, have counter-attack like you. I'm going to spend that energy to re-roll. So I spend one energy, I'm going to re-roll one of those dice. One. Hmm. <sighs> Paid re-rolls can happen one at a time. So if I really wanted to, I could spend another energy to re-roll another one. I'm, yeah. I'm going to take that. Okay. So that's three wounds. So when a hero takes wounds, they first come from the reserve zone to here. If the reserve zone was empty, they would come from the action spaces. And if the action spaces are empty, they come from the reserve zone. So I'm going to take three wounds... They go into there. Right. There you go. Shame I can't spend cubes to make him attack again. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. I'm not going to activate these. Okay. Which might have seemed like the obvious thing to do because they're cheapest. But the best, they he really just needs to stay where he is to defend that spot. He could potentially hurt himself and move a bit closer, but... Um, I think what I'm going to do... You're going to activate the warning tile. I'm going to activate the warning okay. tile. So two cubes, you have two reinforcement points. Which is not very much. So as we mentioned, each of the villain miniatures that can be brought back into play have a reinforcement number in the bottom right of their tile. And you spend those two reinforcement points and uh, you spawn them back on the board. Now, this mission is special in that right now there is only one reinforcement point. But some of the other missions have two, three or four mm. different reinforcement points. Now, if I'd been slightly cleverer than I actually am, I could have uh, done that first, brought this guy back in over here, and then he could have moved when the other one activated and maybe come up here. That might have been that what would I'd have done been an idea. if I'd been a bit cleverer, uh, but I didn't. So it I'm would have meant to... it would have cost you more energy, I think, to then activate. Yeah, the... It would have cost me one extra cube yeah. to to to. But, but I didn't that would have been good, yeah. 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 Uh, so what I am going to do is I'm going to bring these hazmat thugs. You can bring back two of those. Um, cost one Because they've each. only got a reinforcement value of one, so you can bring two of them in. So I can bring two hazmat thugs in yeah. to here. Okay. And that's your two reinforcement points spent. Yeah. Now, uh, have they got line of sight up to here? Let's, let's check with the line of sight tool. So from here, yes, they do. Yeah. So, so if, if, so if, if we didn't have the line of stay there, if they could shoot because of the because of the line. If we didn't have the line of sight tool, yeah, the letters do not match. Mm. But what mm. we do is we draw an imaginary line from there to there. Yeah. Does it cross an area of higher elevation? No. 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 So there is line no of sight. No obstacles. So yeah, you don't have to use the tool. The tool is really nice, but it's relatively easy to work out anyway. A line okay. from there to there does isn't isn't blocked. Basically, so right. Mm. Oh dear. So, yeah, that's oh dear. My, uh... <laughs> now, did you want to dredge? The, consider dredging the river at the start of your next turn. Yes, because that will lose 
two of those cubes. I don't need to make that decision. You don't now. need to make that decision now. I might want to do it next turn if I'm thinking to make about yeah. those cheaper. Okay, so we go to round four. It is the hero's turn in round four. And you've cracked the code. The code has been cracked. So the next step is we need to be in here and here at the same time in order to enter the access codes. But that is a complex manipulation of difficulty one. And a complex manipulation is affected by enemy menace indexes. So if you try and... Oh, this disappears now. If we try and do it in here right now, Scarecrow has a menace three. index of three. That's got one, that's got one. So it's actually a minus five before if you start. try and do it before getting rid of that. So I don't think we have a choice at this stage. I think we have to get rid of Scarecrow. Yeah. Now, we discussed at the start that we were using the variant rule that heroes recovered one extra energy. How are we feeling about that now? Because I think this is going quite well for the heroes. And I'd be more than happy to drop back to the normal rules at this stage. What do you think? Because I don't want it to be too easy for the heroes. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to do that. I'm, if we do, I'm going to rest. Peter, how do you feel? Um, do you feel that it... I think the luck has been with us in a few places. And I think... Peter's I, had some pretty rough rolls, to be fair. So yeah. I'm, I'm happy with that. But we can go with if that. You like, if, if, yeah. if, if, you, if you like, but I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the balance as being about right in this uh, scenario. Okay, I'm, well, let, let, let's go with that. There's plenty of jeopardy still. So we're, you, we're It may gonna, look as though it's going your way, but you haven't won yet. No. So for now, we're gonna we're gonna drop that variant rule, and we're just gonna okay. go back to the back to the default numbers. Sure. So, okay. <laughs> are you, so, are you okay, rest? So, so so let's uh, let's just be clear. Yeah. Um, I I might regret that later. Yeah. I'll be sat in the, uh, yeah. I'll sat in the bar. Like, yeah. The we, pub later on going. Why, saying, did, you know, why did you say that? Now, uh, I have to use batarangs to get in there. Now, if I rest. I think I'm likely to take damage by the hazmat thugs. Yeah. All right. Now, um, I'm going to need quite a bit for... Yeah. Uh, I think resting might be the right thing for you to do. Do you? I think so. Just just take the hits. Because I'm going to get hit next turn. Because the hazmat thugs are only cost two to activate. And there's two that can shoot me. Yeah, they're not very good. But you're right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a tricky decision. Aren't they? How much? They get two white. Two dice. white. Two oh, with that's not. With re uh, yeah, okay, I'm going to rest. So, I'm so, gonna turn my so we, ha we haven't seen this yet, but what you do is you flip the marker to the other side, yep. and you get back the higher number of cubes, but which, you can't perform any action. Which is five. Yeah. So three, four, five. Right. That's me done. Okay. Now, there is something that I forgot to mention. I mentioned this right at the start. I said step three of our turn mm -hmm. is when we choose which stance. Because I forgot steps one and two. Right? And step two is any cube spent on the villain's turn, they go back there. So because I spent two cubes on the villain's oh, turn, defending. they go back. So right. for heroes, any cube spent on their turn go here at the end of the turn. But also any cube spent here on the villain's turn go back here at the start right. of the turn. Okay. That, that's the first thing that you do on your turn. Mm. Batman is going to stay active. Yeah, good. So I only get two. Okay. But Batman is now the only one that can take actions. Mm. And I'm tempted to go in here and try and start beating people up. Yeah, we need to get rid of these guys. Because I also want to demonstrate how the misfortune skill works. Because <laughs> um, I'm, I'm we'll hoping... have plenty of that. <laughs> I'm hoping that it isn't going to affect me too much because my dice are pretty good dice. The misfortune skill, as we mentioned earlier on, is going to allow Peter to force us to re-roll our own dice. Now, if we're rolling white and yellow... There's a lot of blanks on the white and yellow dice. But because I'm rolling red and orange, I'm hoping that, you roll, that the okay. misfortune isn't going to have much effect on me. So Batman is going to choose the movement action. I'm going to move out of here into here. That cost me two movement points because of the hindering modifier of that one. Okay. Now that I'm in here, that's my two free movement points used. I'm going to attack one of the prisoners because I cannot attack Scarecrow because he's got protected two. Oh, there's another skill we forgot. Do you want to just put Scarecrow on the thing? Oh, yes. There is another skill that Scarecrow has got called Horror 2. That means it's going to cost two extra movement points to move into Scarecrow's that's area. That's that, that's that one there. In the middle. Yeah. Okay, but I'm going to do it. Yeah. I am going to do it. So I am going to buy two extra movement points to move into Scarecrow's area. 
Then I am going to have one energy on doing a melee attack. So I get a red dice and an orange dice. God, this should be good. This should be good. Off we go. No free rerolls. Two. So that's what I've rolled. The misfortune comes before the paid re-rolls. So Peter has to decide now if he wants to use the misfortune before I choose whether I want to pay to do any re-rolls. So there are two blanks on this one. If I make you re-roll that one, the likelihood is that you're going to get the same or better again. No, I'm not going to make Okay, so, so it's two successes. Now I choose whether I want to pay to re-roll. And he's got martial arts. That's a good point. I've got martial, martial arts. arts. So martial arts is an extra, yeah. an extra one. But the martial arts happens after the reroll. So let's say, for example, this is not going to happen. But hypothetic hypothetically speaking, you ch force me to reroll this dice and I rolled a blank. Yeah. Then you force me to roll this dice and I rolled a blank. I didn't pay to do any rerolls. Mm. The martial arts does not work because I don't have one success at that point. Right. That's a kind of. Mm. Desperation uh, move. I'm not <laughs> going to do that. So it's three successes on one of the prisoners. The prisoner has one automatic defense success. Remember, I have combo as well. I think it's worth. You've only got one di one cube. I've only got one cube left. Um, let's yeah. Let's let's defend him. Thought you might two, two. Yeah, two this orange is, dice. Is gonna be Come on. This. What did I get? I got three. Can be blank. It can be blank. Oh wow! Okay, oh, so he, that Batman. Yeah, he's turned invisible. <laughs> <laughs> Batman's gone. Poof, and missed. I'm gonna have another attack. Same again. One red, one orange. Come on, Batman. Do this. Oh. Oops. Well. <laughs> you know what I was saying I'll about. I tell you what. I shouldn't have that. I should have gone in there and done that. Cool. Uh, would you like me to re-roll any of those dots? Um. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> I have no cubes left. I cannot re-roll. Martial arts doesn't work. Oh, Batman. That is it. That is the end of our Batman. turn. Batman. What an awful turn that was. All we've really done, I've rested and you've got into danger. <laughs> I hacked the computer though. You did. That was yeah. last turn. Yeah. That yeah, was that was good. That was a good day. And the grenade was good. The grenade was fun. Yeah. It didn't actually have didn't do what we the same effect as we wanted it to. So, it was fun. beginning of the villain's turn. Yeah. Those go back. There. Oh, he's got all his cues. Oh, all everything cues back. back, so I'm not oh, going to dredge no. the river just yet. Uh, all the prisoners, I might dredge the river, because then the prisoners, I can activate them cheaper. I don't know. Is that, is that the right thing to do? <sighs> Depends what other tile you're wanting to activate yeah. as well. Because um, activating the hazmat thugs for two, then using yeah. those two cubes to dredge the river... And then activating the prisoners. Because mm. you because you reinforced with the hazmat thugs. That was a good move. Mm. Hazmat was. thugs. Yeah. Uh, for two. Because they were down the got, river. Got a bad feeling about this. Uh, yeah, me they've too. got two movement points. So he can go one, one two, two. And then he can shoot. Yeah. Right, so ranged attack, they've got two, two white, white dice, dice. But they both re roll. With re rolls on both of them. So have some of this. Come on. Ugh. Yes. That's what uh, I like. But re rolls. Re rolls. Re rolls. Re rolls. No, I'll tell you what. Have some of this. <laughs> Instead. <laughs> oh. oh. Ouch. Oh. Ouch. No, come on. Wow. No, come on. <laughs> okay, so Nightwing is getting hit for four successes. Now, Nightwing has one yellow die in defense. Yep. You can buy I extra can buy defense dice. Orange. With... Are these buy orange? Buy orange dice, yes. Yeah, I'm going to do that, aren't I? How many do you want to buy? I'm going to buy one. Okay. You can't buy any more once you've made that decision. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but you could re-roll. You can re-roll, yeah. There's one, so you take three wounds. Okay, so wounds have to come from here. They come from there first, yeah. Yeah, one, two, three. Yeah. Okay, yep. right. Well. Ouch. That was um, just one hazmat. I said they weren't very good. Oh, yeah. Just and ten minutes one. ago, we said we were no. <laughs> okay. We were fine. Yeah, we were fine. Until Batman. And <laughs> Bushed out and then I got hit. Encouraged. Are you attacking me by any chance? 
Can't hear anybody else. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think so. Okay. Um, Encouraged by the success indexes, of his friends. No, they're immune because they've got... They've got hazmat yeah. suits on. So if, the, if they didn't have the gas masks on... Oh, yes, the menace true. index would be affecting this because it's a range attack. Toxic fumes would be yeah, toxic fumes would be affecting it, but they've got the gas masks on. Stopping their shooting skill. Okay, let's have a go. That one we will keep, and this one we will re-roll. And it's Oof. it's two. So just two, two. successes. So Again, got you've got a yellow. One one yellow. I, could, I could choose oh. a paid re-roll. Could. I've got a few cubes here. Uh. Yeah, come on. Let's oh, do he's doing it. Come re-rolling on. white. Let's, let's, wow. re-roll, let's re-roll white. I've got a good feeling about Steve over I've there. He's doing all right. Bad feeling about this. Blaming Steve. Oh, no. I'm going to okay. leave it there. Okay. So, so just two. So two, two. Two attack successes coming in. Okay. Um, You've got a free yellow. Do you yeah. want to buy I've got. Well, I, I did rest. Um, I've got enough to do some decent damage. Yeah. I think I will. Okay. Gonna buy yeah, a, yeah, so gonna buy, a buy an orange. Buy an orange. So yellow and an orange. For a two. One. And take one. one wound. Take one more wound. Okay, you got one hazmat thug left to activate. Oh yes. Oof. The fun hasn't stopped yet. You've got two moves. You could one, two, yeah. spend an extra. Or he could he could shoot Batman. From there you can see into the room. That's true. Batman's looking a bit depleted. Isn't He's he? yeah. Oh, they should have gone there at the end of my turn. Hmm. Or we could spend an extra cube to get here Mm -hmm. and put another extra shot into, but we want to be slowing you down. I'm not going to stop you, I don't think, but I can slow you down enough to stop you getting one guy in each of there. One, two. I could put him in there. If I could move him in there, that makes it less likely that you're going to be able to get through to Scarecrow. So, decisions to be made. Uh, oh, he's got two movements, so I could move, shoot, and then I could move him in. Yep, yeah. you could pay to move him in. Yeah. yeah. So, well, let's 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 ha- okay. give him his move. Yeah. Give him his shot. Boy, two Batman. white dice with re-rolls. Two white dice with re-rolls. Oh, <laughs> Just that they Come they need to there. relay they need to re- <laughs> yeah they need to reload the gun that's what it is. Why did I leave my back cape? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you had the back cape. I had the back cape. You that day, yeah. bullets. Oh, 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 good. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we wow, did that. that's good. Okay, and then, do you uh, want to pay to move him? No. If I was to, he's got no melee. No. Uh, so. If I if I want to attack with him and he's in there, you can. You've I always can. got line of sight to your own area, but it would and be because a... there's plenty of friends in there, they would cancel out the menace index from Batman, so you'd be fine. Uh, or if I leave him in here, then he's going to slow you down yeah. when you're trying to get through to here, mm-hmm. which is also so. I've got two real options. One is to bolster Scarecrow, because as long as Scarecrow has got two buddies in there with him, can't be then he can't be attacked. Yeah. And he can continue to make force you to re-roll, but Batman's re-rolls force, uh, are not that. Yeah. So, uh, do we need a bit more cannon fodder in there to slow Batman down uh, is the real question. And I think the answer to that is probably... Did we forget something? What was that? Did you attack Batman when Batman was in here? No, you've not done that yet, have you? Not yet. Okay, because you could force me to re-roll my own defence dice when you attack me. Okay. Yeah. But that's not happened yet. Yeah, but unfortunately, um, Marksman of the Week Mm -hmm. uh, didn't manage to put any successes on If if you had, and I've rolled (laughs) defence, you could have forced me to re-roll my defence dice. Okay, he's going to. Uh, he's going to move in. Okay, so you spend an energy cube to buy one movement point. Oh, that's, that's costing an energy cube to do yeah. that. Yeah. It was 50 50 as to whether I left him there. It's costing an extra energy cube to move him in. I'm going to. Oh, sorry, I'm going to leave him there. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, he's going to stay. Right, do you want to dredge the river? 
Yes. Okay, so dredging the river, as we mentioned, costs two cubes, but those two cubes come from the fatigue zone and they are removed from the game. So that tile has gone. That means those uh, villains can never be brought back in as reinforcements, but it does mean that all of the tiles slide down. So, your second, and that doesn't count as an activation. So that's like a free thing that you can do. So I've still got... You've still got a tile to activate. I could activate Scarecrow. And attempt to punch Batman. Or I could activate the prisoners again. That would be fun. You've got four of those. Two energy cubes returned to the box. Uh, must be taken from the fatigue zone if possible, but you can take them from other places. Um, no limit to the number of neutralized tiles that you may dredge from the river, as long as you've got the energy cubes to do so. Mm -hmm. There you go. Let's 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 activate the prisoners. Uh -oh. This is going to cost me three cubes. That's expensive. Yeah. Uh, but this yeah, is going to hurt. But there's uh, four. It's going to hurt. This badly. is going to be them. fun. Um, <laughs> this guy. Uh, now he's already jumped. I think from yeah. there. Yeah. So he can. You, he he can landed jump on there. He's a, bit, he's a bit out of breath, but he's had a turn to get his breath back. He could jump across to here. That's three movements. Three yeah. movements. And he's got three movements, so he could jump across to there. Yeah, there you go. Uh, at a cost of... It's all getting very busy in there. And... Uh, he's not going to take a swing at um, right, wing. right wing because he knows that he'll get... Counter-attack. ...with the counter-attack. Okay. So he's going to... Um, Interest it. But he would have got a plus one because of his buddy... Not being quite a, because of the toxic fumes. Ah, that cancels it out. Yeah, so Nightwing has effectively, where well, you've got one menace index from Nightwing, and you've yep. got one from the Toxic Fumes, yep. and you've only got one from a friend. So, okay. so the sneak attack bonus does not work. And that would have been a white and a yellow, and then you would have counter... Well, the yellow. Two yellow. But you've two? Got, you've two yellow, because you've got counter attack. Oh, two. yeah, two. But you've yeah. got no cubes in your... No. Fatigue zone. Which means any wounds you take are going to have to come. come from oh, two wounds from there. First of all, from there. And, and, there, then, and then from there. So if Nightwing gets wounded now, the cubes come from here and then from here. The plot thickens. Actually, I was going to just sit tight, but now I think I, I, I'm going to sacrifice him. He's probably going to get knocked out. It's worth it? I think it's worth it. So okay. let's do that. A white and, an or and a yellow. White, white and, a yellow. and a yellow. No rerolls. No rerolls. Okay. So attacking Nightwing. Come on. Come on. Let's see some... Nothing. Uh, and you get to... Counter. counter attack. Yep, counter attack. Two yellow. So counter attacks are always yellow, and Nightwing gets two, because he's got counter attack two, and you can use your martial arts. Yep. Oh, there you go, that's five. Five. And after all that effort... Uh, all that, I jumped all that way. Jumping around, jumping around. But by the time he got there, he was so tired, he couldn't I mean, do anything. If you think about this in a film, what he's done is he's jumped across, he's, he's tried to leap in, Nightwing's caught him and just, and just thrown gone. him. Dunk! Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, but we, we, just looking at the, 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 the way that this feels in the game, it just feels very very cartoonish, it feels very yeah. thematic, it yeah. feels... Uh, um, it, 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 yeah, okay. Uh, right, what's he going to do? Uh, he's just seen his buddy leap around and then fall flat on his face. He's going to go in here, I think. So that's cost two movement points. One yeah. plus one for the hindering modifier. Uh, yeah, so that's all he's going to do. In so he's not going to attack movement. Batman? So now... I think Batman's going to get beaten up Batman is quite gonna get badly. Smacked around a bit. Uh, so one. at this point, the toxic fumes don't affect you because you've got five points of friendly menace indexes and two points of enemy menace indexes. So, in other words, you do get the sneak yeah. attack. Okay. So Does he get a free attack? You, get, you can still attack with this guy, can't yeah, you? Yeah, he's, he's, he's only moved. Yeah. So the uh, so so the, the, the stealth the benefit... Sneak attack does sneak work. Attack. It's plus one success, so it's one free so hit. So it's just one, it's not yeah. one for each. No. Nope. So it's one free hit. Okay. So it's a bit like having uh, martial arts. It's a little bit like having martial arts. Let's yeah. go with him first. Let's put Batman in the middle. There we go. He's surrounded. With Scarecrow cackling at him. Yeah, yeah. 
So let's see what he can do then. Oh, well, I, I have no Ouch. cubes. No Defend cubes myself. left. Four hits. Four wounds. Oh, my goodness. This has been a disastrous turn. And then the next one. Ever since I said, oh, I think yeah. we're doing well. I think we're doing well. Let's go back to the normal rules. And then the next one. And you've got no cubes to roll. I got no cubes. Defend yourself. Right? I think Batman might be neutralised. Oh, three hits. Three. Batman has one energy left. And the final prisoner. Well, this is, yeah, you've automatically got the one. So there you go. So what we've got, is, I mean, it's good this has happened for the purpose of demonstrating the games. Batman has all of his cubes here. What that means is Batman is neutralised. Now that means a few things. My size indexes and my menace indexes do not count. Mm -hmm. I am effectively lying on the floor. Um, and it means on my next turn I must rest. So that's, right. what, a, that's what a hero being neutralised does. So he's not dead. Not dead yet. But seriously inconvenient. But I'm hoping that's that's <laughs> that's it for your turn. That that is it for my turn. Way. I should think so. So it is our turn. Your cubes that you spent on the villain's turn go to that area. I have to rest because I'm neutralised. And when you rest, as we've seen before, you move cubes from here to here. If you have no cubes here, you move them from here to here. So I basically get six cubes back there. Still not great. Um, Brett is saying, shouldn't you have rolled orange defence dice? That's a, that's you a very good no point. Cubes. Uh, no, that's a very good, very good point. We did miss something. Thank you very much. We do need to just undo that. So there were four oh, hits you got on the first one and three hits on the second. And, and then, then two, two on the third. So it was four, right. three, okay. two. So, yes, you're absolutely right. Even though I have no cubes, Batman has a one orange defence. So, yeah, we'll just undo that and we'll fix it. So the first defence was against four. I've got yellow. And I rolled one. So it's only three. So he's not dead yet. The second one was three. And I rolled one, so he's only two. And then the third one was, was two. two. And I rolled none. So it's two. Okay, he's still so, on his feet. So all of those rules that we just explained about a hero being neutralised, that's what would have happened. <laughs> As it is, I'm not quite neutralised. But if I was to go active this round, I would only restore two energy. One would be to there, and one would be to there. That isn't great. But I'm worried. Let, let, let me have a think. Let me have a think. So at the moment, that's there and that's there. The board situation right now is grim. But, and the problem is, Peter's cycling his cubes quite fast now. Because mm -hmm. you're going to get five back, which means you could activate the prisoners again. Yeah. And those prisoners together are just going to constantly be beating up Batman. What What are you planning to do? Irrelevant, irrespective of what I do. Okay. Are you so able to deal with those prisoners? I was going to attack the prisoners with the Batarangs. Have you done your thingy yet? Have you done your... No, I've not, your I'm not, cho recovery? not chosen yet. So you're going to have six cubes. I'm, I'm going to have six cubes. Right, awesome. So I'm going to go active. Should I rest? Gives me two. And have a moment's respite while you deal with this room. Yeah, if I can if I can get enough on there. Or should I stay active and have one attack on one of the prisoners? Because that one attack on that one prisoner might be enough. Might be enough. What are we on? Are we on turn five? Oh yes. Yeah. We're running out of time. We're running out of time. We've got Let's to do this. I, I think this turn. I think it's still in your favour. I think you're still gonna do it. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Okay. Well, I'm going to go active. I'm going to go... I w I'm, I'm going to go active as well. Okay. So I'm going active. Uh, I get two but cubes. So one and one. That's it. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna punch one prisoner and that's it. Right. Okay. Okay. So what have, what have you done? Okay. You've, you've gone active so and you've I've recovered gone active, two cubes. Recover two cubes. Shall I go first? Because yeah. I'm only doing yeah. one thing. Yeah. I, ca I can't move out, because if I move out of here... Yeah, it's cost too much. The, f the hindering modifier yeah. is four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, at the moment. But if I were to try and thin it to out, drop some, it then would I be, could move out later. Very possibly. So, I'm going to punch, with my taser gun, one of the prisoners. Yeah, this should do it. This should do it. Come on. Come on, Batman. 
two. Right. Do you want, with your misfortune, to force me to re-roll any of those dice? Uh, no. Okay, so I, I get th- one extra for martial arts. I think I might defend. Mm. You should have gone first. Yeah. Should have thinned him out first. Yeah, I forced him to defend against you. Yeah, and then if you just keeps got, up. Um, if you knock him down, you will. I have a com- I have combo of one red die. I'm going to use two. Right. Okay. Mm. So I've got three successes coming in. I've got two orange dice. Now that's a it's a bit of an extreme thing to do. It but is, but I'm gonna do it. We're all about the extremes. This is <laughs> gaming rules extreme. I'm just I'm renaming the channel. That's if it. this if this was a <laughs> We only play ah. dice games. You see this, this this whole game has got a completely different feel to it to the way that you might play something like a war game where you'd be kind of this this is much more kind of Kapow, wham, cartoonish, isn't it? it yeah, very much. And if I had time to edit this video properly before the Kickstarter, oh, three oh, I, I would have been putting animated Kapow's yeah. on. Yeah. Done. And that, that, that's it. That, that's my job. I used up two of his cubes. You I did. That was, that so, was so there's that. For yeah. my set, what I might end up doing is printing out some kind of explosions that say Kapow yeah, and, yeah, like yeah, that, and, then, and then put them on the, <laughs> and to take a photo of it when you Absolutely. get a proper... Uh, okay, so there we are. Right, I'm now going to go and hide in this corner, just just for a minute. There you the go. Photocopy. Okay. I'll hide there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> going to hide behind the photocopier. Okay, so I'm right. going. So Nightwing. Ranged attack. So you ranged attack because if you were in the room, although you're better in melee. Yep. If you were in the room, we would be prone to misfortune. Scarecrow's misfortune skill. As it is, ranged attack into the room. You've got line of sight. You've got the gas mask on, so the toxic fumes are not affecting you. Yep. Off you go. Okay, so uh, the question is, how many do I spend per... But I do need to take three of them out and then still have something left for Scarecrow. So... Two of them. You'll need to take two of them out and then you can attack Scarecrow. Two of them out. Only two of them. Okay. I think with your yellow dice with re-rolls... Yeah. I think one cube at a time should be... should be enough. Should be enough. Should be enough. Okay. So... First attack. We take, we take the older chap out. Okay. Is, is that is that because you got some of the older people? <laughs> no, it's just that uh, <laughs> it can stop his suffering. Okay. Um, okay, so that's four. Three re roll the I can re roll the yellow. Yeah, you got this one. Five. Five. Okay. There he goes. He's gone. Right. I'm going to spend another cube. I can do this four times. So let's get another one. Right, now you can't re roll the orange unless you re-roll pay for a re roll. But two's okay. How much two's it? forcing him to one. defend. You've got to defend, which gets rid of one, which means I've got enough cube to do another one. Yeah. Yeah. I'll stay. He's going to do it. Okay. He's going to do it. Now, this is a blank. Come on, blank. Come on, blank. blank, blank. Come on, blank. blank. Come on, blank. blank. Come on, blank. 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 Steady, steady on. <laughs> Get ready. Yeah! Oh! <laughs> That's you what you need. You can't re-roll because you don't have any cubes. I've got no cubes there. No one. cubes. Oh. Right. Okay. Nice. Now. Scarecrow can be attacked. Come on. Scarecrow's protection is down. Come on, Nightwing. Right. This time, I'm going to spend two. Did you? Oh yeah. No misfortune. No, no misfortune because I'm outside. Do you want to use two? Well, I, was, I don't want to use two. I didn't. I put. Still, I put it back because because I've still got this. I've still got this. I'm just thinking I only need to do two. two automatic defence instead of one. But I still think more dice is better, isn't it? I don't know. It's a tricky one. Well, we definitely got to get him out of the way. I'm going to spend another one to get but another This orange. would be your last attack. Yeah, I can't do any more. The oh, I- you could the re-roll idea- this. So it's two orange and two yellow. And then I could re-roll. But you could pay to re-roll. Yeah. Come on. Because we need to do two damage. And he's got no cubes left. So you're attacking Scarecrow. I'm Scarecrow. attacking Scarecrow, which has got... Two health. Two health. He's got no... He's got two and automatic defence, but he's got no cubes. Right. So I need four. <coughs> oh, come on. Now, you've got a free re-roll of the yellow. yellow. And a paid re-roll. Well, let's do that first. Free That's re-roll a free first. re-roll Yeah. Yeah, because I can do paid re-rolls afterwards. Yeah. Better. Oh. That's four. That's four. Do you want to pay to re-roll the orange? I don't think... Don't need it, do I? No, you don't need it. You need four. We need four. So four successes. We've done it. 
Uh, no cubes left to defend yourself. Scarecrow has two automatic defense successes. Scarecrow is gone. Scarecrow is neutralized. Yes. I'm just going to put him. Uh, just going to put him here. No. <laughs> in the vat. <laughs> just put him in the vat. Um, so Scarecrow's title is neutralized. Okay. Flipped over and moved to the. Nightwing end. holds his batarangs oh. in triumph. Right. You've still got two cubes left. Yeah. And you haven't moved. And I need to get in here to do this, or I need to get over there. So you're okay here without moving because you won't be able to do much. I'm okay here. Um, I'd do better to go through here. here. Yeah. Um, and it's better for me to move that way. Otherwise, yep. I'd get an. Uh, no, you wouldn't get. Oh, well, no, because of two. Okay. Because I'm in the well. Batman. So it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Okay, so I'll do a movement. It's my first movement this turn. Yep. So I get a free movement two of two. Two movement points. So that's one. Two. Two. If you carried on moving. It cost me, it's but cost I've got you three movement points to move out of there because you've not got elusive. Yeah, so I can't do that. No. So I have to stay there. Yeah. Okay, that's me. Are done. we done? Yep. So at the end of our turn, cube spent, go to here. Fatigue. <laughs> Batman is Batman so is badly no. damaged. Bat Batman is uh, worn out. Right, it is now the villain's turn <sighs> five. Now then, just, just to recap, we've I'm got exhausted. the next turn, we must. Do that. Absolutely. Absolutely do we, that. We have to do that next turn. Because the last turn is to get out. We still might not have enough to get out, yeah. but it's been very close. And you're going to be stuck on movement. I am going to be seriously stuck on movement. Yeah. I can't rest next turn because no. I need to do mm. You need that. to do that. Maybe I should have rested. Because <laughs> my punch did nothing. <laughs> you didn't know that at the time, though. Didn't know that at the time. But I was doing that to give you more chance, yeah. and as it turns yeah. out, you didn't need that, that. I managed it. So you get your cubes back. You get your four cubes that you'd spent. They come back. And then you get five. Right, here we go. Now I could choose to use two of these cubes and get rid of one of these in order so, to make it cheaper. We haven't discussed this yet, but since, since you've mentioned it, we have mentioned dredging the river. Dredging the river is when you remove a tile from the river which is already neutralised. However, there is something else that the villain can do. The villain, once per game, can do something called demobilisation. And if you just read on your chart, just to remind me what this does. Demobilisation. Once per game you may demobilise an elite or henchman character tile. Flip the tile to its neutralised side and remove all corresponding miniatures from the game. Then dredge the river of this tile, following the same process and cost as yeah, normal. Yeah, so dredging. basically you can't do it with Scarecrow, but the other ones you can. So you can voluntarily demobilise. The disadvantage with that is it removes all of the miniatures from yeah. the board. So you could say, right, I'm going to demobilise the thugs, and those two thugs would go home. Well, that's what I am actually... Okay. This might sound a bit strange, but I am actually thinking of doing that. Because, because that makes it my cheaper for other guys ones. that I need to be recycling are the hazmat folks. Mm. Uh, they are my... I mean, it's down to the wire now. We're down to the it last is. two turns. Yeah. Um, you've got to achieve your objectives. You're, all, you're, you're, on your, you're out of energy. You're mm -hmm. really, really on your... On, on, on your out on your feet I've got to think about am I really going to get much use out of him because he's too far away yeah he's not going to do anything so can I get enough use out of he can move three but that's just going to just we've discovered he's going to already going to just about get that's, that's, he's not yeah. going to get into the action so is he on his own worth keeping just so that he can do some kind of attack when they when you come in here, well, because he's also menace against the manipulation. Yeah. yeah, so that's true. So he is useful passively, just sitting there doing nothing. But he's in the way. On useful my river. enough to cost you one extra energy cube for every other tile that you activate. Yeah, it's interesting. Mm. The whole demobilization. When I first read the rule, I'm like, why would you ever do that? Mm. And now this is the first time I think I've actually seen it where. I can understand why that rule's there. If he hadn't been there, right in the right place, 
if he'd been there, it would have been a no brainer. <laughs> but the fact he's in is he's in exactly the right place to cause you grief when the time comes. And if I retire him now and you get in there and you just about manage to achieve it, I'm going to be thinking, damn it, I shouldn't have done that. I'm going to leave him. Okay. I'm going to leave him and I'm so going to spend four... No demobilization. Oh, my goodness. I've only got five cubes. Hmm. So I can't do both the brutes and yeah, the you hazmat. Can. Always I can if I do, do the, the brutes first down. and then the hazmats. Yeah. So let's do the let's do the brute. Brute, brute first to two. Or the brute. There's only one of him yeah. left. So cost you two cubes. Yeah. Who's two he going to attack? Uh, good question. You can move out without the hindering modifier because he's keeping Nightwing busy. Batman. Yep. Yeah. Bring it. I can't defend myself. No. Oh, this is just, oh, this, this is, is a bit yeah. nasty. So two whites and a yellow. He's got chains. He's got, so he's got plus one. He's got one. Two whites and a yellow. Two whites and a yellow, and there's a yeah. one. The one means you can do that one time. The one there. So yeah, it's two whites and a yellow once. If it had the number two there, it yeah. means you'd do two separate attacks, both right. of which were two whites and a yellow. Okay. Most of the villains, it's only ever one, but some of them have two. One of them even has four. So, two whites and a yellow. Come on, come on. We've had some failures recently, team. Team meeting, briefing session. <laughs> you all stand around the whiteboard. Just drop your chains first, We've please. got some emails from head office saying that we're looking for some better outcomes. <laughs> uh, one <laughs> hit. One. Just the one hit. Do you want to pay to do any re-rolls? No. If you do, you won't be able to activate the hazmat folks. No. That's all you've got. Oops, sorry. Come on, Batman. And there he goes. Yeah. He's defended it. That's all right. Absolutely, Absolutely. needed that. That's all right. Absolutely. All right. Now we're going to activate the hazmat thugs using oh. the remainder of our. Oh no! This is very much. Yes, yeah, this might have gone a bit wrong. Yeah. Now. And um, they've got how much movement? Two. Two movement, but they've got ranged attacks. Yeah. And even though it's only two white dice, oh. it's re rolls. Oh. Ouch! Oh. You know what's going to happen here? Yeah. He's yeah. Been, oh no! 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 So no! 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 If he shoots there, does, yep. is he in, is he hindered? Nope. He's not. Uh, yes. Because, By me. Because of this. So he's going to get a negative. Yeah, you'll get a minus one success because there's a hindering modifier caused by Nightwing's menace in If he shoots him, you'll still get the minus one. I still get so. Yeah. There's always going to be a minus one yeah. unless I lose. Un something. Unless you move out and then shoot him. Right. And then you won't. Or in your case, probably best moving there. Yeah, move there, <clears throat> and now shoot him. Yeah. Mm. So two, he's two got, white dice with rerolls. Uh, two two white dice with rerolls. Yeah, that's okay. We've seen it before. Yeah. Okay. Uh, two white dice with rerolls. Oh, come on. There's well, four blanks on though. each of those dice. Two uh, hits. Two hits. Two. Two hits. But I have. So Nightwing has a free yellow dice. Yellow. You can buy extra ones if you want, but that's going to cost uh, you cubes out of your that. reserve zone. So, yeah, so it's two wounds. Two wounds. That's okay. Yeah. Right. Next. I can't afford to take any more though. Yeah. It's this. This. Because otherwise, I'm not going to recover enough. Yes, yeah, is it? Oh. This is it? Oh, I see. Yeah. Good you. Yeah. Well, we're we going to go because this guy can come in and go. Two hits. Ouch. You get a re-roll. Oh yes. That's the other one. Do I? Oh yes. Just two hits. One. Success is one wound. Yeah. Nothing you can do now. Well, you don't want to re-roll Well, that, I don't want to re-roll it because it's not going to help me, is it really? Okay. And the final hazmat thug. This means that I don't get two back for... Oh, he's going for it. He's going for you. Yeah. Because I had the most movement to get through. Oh. That's a miss. Oh, it's going to be hits. bad! Yeah. Come on, your defence. Get the armour on. No, two no. wounds. Ouch. No, that, well, I think he's all over for us. really... Yeah. 
So me changing that very yeah. rule halfway through was actually... Uh, and when Peter said, change well, back? no, it's quite good. It's quite balanced. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think you might I think be right. it was. We just had a terrible round after that. Yeah. So if you're done, yeah. it is the hero's turn six. But at this point, I think victory is... We, we cannot go resting because turn six is where we need to turn on the access codes to get the information card. But then we've somehow got to get the information card and get out by turn seven. We're not going to do it. Well, by the end of our turn by seven. By the end of our turn seven. So. Aren't we? No. Not, not with you in that state. How are you going to get there and enter that access code on this turn? I get two free movement. Yeah. I get one into there. You, it costs get, me two to move to there. To there. That's free movement. Is, uh, okay, so I can't get there on this turn. Um, but we could do it in turn seven can we yeah because i will be i will i will move for one for free movement into the safe room you're already in the right room Okay. On turn seven, we do the manipulation, so it's going to cost me one. It's going to cost me nothing to get into that room. Okay. All right. Um, we do the manipulation and leg it, and I should have. So what are you going to do this round? Are you going to you can I, rest? I have to rest, don't I? No, I have to move this. I was going to use this cube. Yeah. I use this okay. cube to get there. So, so I go so, there. So we're both going to go active. Go, and go act, stay active. I've got two cubes. I'm going to change that one for that one. I've got two cubes. Yep. You've got one cube. I've got one cube. And then one goes from there to there. Two goes from there to there. Uh, no, just one. Unless we're changing the rule back to the variant. <laughs> Which won't make any difference at this Sorry, point. Sorry, no, no, no. Okay, one. Yeah. One. Oh, yeah, one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, I, so for my move... So we're not, in, we're not doing the access code this turn? No, because I can't, can't, can't so get there. So shall I just do my but thing But you first. just do your thing and hit them. I'm going to punch the prisoner. Yeah. So red and an orange. One hit. I mean, I you've got no that. cubes. So, so one hit is got enough martial. because I've got martial arts. Yep. So two hits, prisoner is gone. Yeah. My combo happens. Come on, Batman. Three. Three. Plus one for martial arts. Four. That's the way well, to do it. Well, there you go. That's how it's supposed now to work. That's how it's supposed to work because now you your move can go through this way. I'll spend my... Hang on. But don't we need to be... Yeah, you need to be there. For, for You need to stay there now. No, 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 no. I'm going to have my two free movement points and I'm going to go here. Oh, because you can do two free movements to come back. Yeah, yeah, good point, good point. Does that work? Yeah, it does. That does. No, it does. Okay, so I have my two, my two free movement points to move from there to there. I then spend that to punch one of the hazmat thugs. Yeah. Three, Plus the martial arts which is, is four, four successes. I then combo. Yes. Oh, it's good when he's got no cubes. Yeah, it's good. No. Missed. It Never mind. didn't do anything, and I can't re-roll it. Never mind. But that was good work. That was still good work. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Right. Okay. Your go. What are My you going to do with your so I, one cube? I'm so I'm going to use two free movement to go one. Into, and then, and then, and then, an and then movement another to movement move to go there. Okay, that's it. Okay, and we're done. Yep. So at the end of our turn, those go there. So I get one. No, no, no. no sorry. That one goes there. That one goes there. End of turn. End of turn. Of course it right. is. Right. Yeah. Villains go. Turn six. <laughs> this is your last turn of the game. Okay. I don't think you need to do very much. You could just have an ice cream and we still wouldn't win. <laughs> so, well, let's just do it anyway. So uh, I'm going to dredge the river. Sorry, Scarecrow. Yeah. Um, you've been retired. Um, I get my five cubes, yeah. uh, which I spend on the hazmat thugs. Yeah. Oh, four. I haven't got enough cubes. Oh, no, it is five. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was fun. Yeah. We're well, close. So it's taken me a while to realise. Yeah. Uh, two whites with three rolls. Oh, come on. Come on. You can do better than that. <laughs> no, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. No, you can't. You've got no bullets left. Um, He's got a movement of two, so he can't... Because that's going to cost him two. That's costing two, and then he can shoot. 
can shoot me. But he's got to shoot Batman. He can't get into Correct. here and shoot. So yeah. right, he'll, he'll shoot. He'll shoot yeah. Batman. Yeah. It's all happening up in this oh, corner. Oh dear. Two hits. Four hits. Four hits. Wow. Well, that's oh, just adding yeah. an orange dice. That is, that's <laughs> adding insult to injury. That is. That's rubbing salt in it. Missed. So Batman is neutralised. Yeah. Again. So, Which means that you'd have to rest. We will play through turn seven because the game is yeah. pretty much over. We'll play to the end. Yeah. I'm neutralised, which means I have to rest. Yeah. So I get I'll six stay cubes. Active. One, two, three. Get two cubes. Four, five, six. Do what you can. Okay. So I will do free movement to go. Uh, well, there's no point you entering the no, access codes because I, I can't I'll, enter I'll them. Ba here. I'll batarang. If you hadn't have neutralised me, then I would have been able to get back two in. Two moves in. And I probably would yeah. have been able to enter and the I could have, And I could have done that. And you but, could have done that. But we couldn't then... We, I, we I, didn't, I didn't have enough cubes no. to get out. We wouldn't have got any further. No. But yeah. do you, you want to beat up some thugs? Yeah. Yeah, batarangs. Let's get the batarangs <laughs> in going. Or do you want right, to melee? Gonna... You're better with melee, aren't you? Uh, yeah, actually, I am. I am. I am better with melee. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Okay, so free movement back into the, uh, into, into mean, the hazard. You're leaving this guy alone. Yeah, let's leave him. Let's get in there. Right, so we have an orange with re-roll and two yellows, two yellows with re-rolls. So spending one cube. Yeah, one cube. Re-roll all of it. Okay, three. Yeah, go on. Good. Uh, and, and now you can now I can batarang that one. So that's a ranged, which is... Re-rolls on the batarangs. Re-rolls on the batarangs. Doesn't matter. Oops. I think you've got it. Come on, do it. Yeah, yes. there you go. And that is the end. That is the end. wiped out the entire so, thing. So, yeah, the board is pretty much empty of bad guys. There's wow. this thug who's been here since the start of the game and done nothing. <laughs> that one's just literally. Been, that nothing. one's been safeguarding the safe. And he's done nothing. So, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. And it we, was looking good for us at the start, <laughs> but there the, then there was that round where I went, oh, I think we're doing well. <laughs> you should have just said, quiet. Let, let, let's drop just say, the no, that was room. fine. That was fine. And then Pete had an awesome turn, and suddenly that's where... So yeah. it would have been interesting if I hadn't have persuaded you to drop that variant rule. Yeah. If we'd have kept it... Whether we would have walked it, I'm I don't think sure we would. We wouldn't have walked, no, have walked it, because no. it was, it was no very, way. very finely no balanced way. all but the way through. It, it might have been. It went... One way on some dice rolls, it went another way on some dice rolls, and it right up to the very last turn, it was you could have done it. Yeah. 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 I think if I'd have gone again, I would have carried on and exhausted myself trying to sort Scarecrow out at the beginning. Yeah. I've also just remembered I've got a skill that I forgot about. What's that? Now Blow it's, up it's, it's, for free. Um, it's pushing limits. Now, it wouldn't have mattered at the end, but Batman has a skill where I can take a wound in order to do an action, and the wound counts as an energy cube spent on that action. I'm right. not sure if there was a time when I could have used it, but I did forget maybe about just it. Maybe just on defence. There, there is maybe. a skill here that I that I there were a few. About. There were a few moments during this game when it was you, you were really kind of. I mean, there you were on, on your face, surrounded mm. by, uh, three, by, three by prisoners. prisoners all smacking you with their nightsticks, yeah. and and maybe <laughs> that was the moment when you could have done something yeah, like that. Yeah, it was so. a lot closer than it was on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. We've all had fun. That was brilliant. Yeah, We've all had fun. Awesome. But more importantly. <laughs> I hope that this has helped anybody watching how to play the game. As I mentioned at the start, we haven't covered all of the rules here. You've seen a lot. You've, see, you've seen the core rules. You've seen how the turn structure works. You've seen how reinforcements work. You've seen difficult terrain. We didn't see dangerous terrain because, well, you've seen it. We, we, <laughs> we kept out it. of it. We didn't see drops because none of us chose to drop. You, you saw a lot of climbing, jumping. You saw the parkour skill. You saw a lot of Batman skills. You saw melee attacks, martial arts combo there's there's over 50 skills in this game there's a lot and every villain that you play against is going to have their own unique uh set of skills um so i don't think anybody could watch this video and then go away and play the game perfectly um but yeah mm. I, I i hope it was i hope it was useful for you to get the game uh to the table um we're all done we're, we're gonna wrap things up now so thank you very much for everybody for watching if you've been watching this video and you've enjoyed it Please give the video a like and leave me a comment in the uh, in the comments. 
Uh, thank you very much to Monolith for asking me to create this video, but also a big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Uh, the only way I'm able to keep the channel going and create more videos is thanks to the support of the Patreon campaign. So if you like this video and you are able to support me directly, it is patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. We're going to some, play some more of this game, aren't we? Yeah, Not let's now. get this up, up again I think, now. I think we all now. quite like this game. It's now. fair to say. Um, and yeah, we've, we've played a, a bit of it over the last couple of months and yeah, we all intend to play more of it. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hope it was useful. Thank you to you two for joining me. We'll see you next time. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.